Welcome back everyone to TNO The Last of Europe. Of course, as you know by now, episode was 11, 11, 12, 10, 11, 12, something like that. I don't know. Oil crush this time. But the demise of Louis et al. They told the ICAC Commissioner Kamido Satoshi to get on with it, and get on with it, he bloody well did. Amidst a typical daily noise of the city of Hong Kong, it was essentially impossible for anyone not in, not in the know to tell there was a major anti-corruption sting going on. The first such operation in Guangdong history, but that was indeed what was taking place. As a disaster for Officer Louis Locke and his crew of corrupt officers. The Guangdong police, directed by the commissioner and his ICAC, quietly began to bring in suspects of questioning, for questioning. Louis was taken at dawn, arrested on charges of bribery, but his arrest was kept quiet for days thereafter. Police that asked what had happened to him were merely told that he was indisposed for the next few days. Those that sh questioned more deeply were given nonsense such as he had an iron shipment of frogs, drank three drops of so Sapporo Ichiban beer and was hospitalized and went to Hiliojiang on vacation, where arrests were simply threatened into silence. As a network of policemen that had corrupted the city spread drugs and associated with the triads, Yakuza and other sort of gangsters joined him in prison that same week. The quiet dismemberment took place without anyone noticing or raising their voices. However, nobody above Louis was arrested. Instead, his Japanese superior, Sagawa Minoru, was told he had an immediate meeting with the commissioner, Omori. Good equipment makes a good catch. Panic at the supermarket. To Li Wai, it had seemed, when she had left, today would be the beginning of a normal run of the nearby Cheong Kong supermarket to buy toilet paper apparently that had been running out across the city recently. Or at least that's what her mother had told her. The whole story seemed absurd to her. She did not question her mother's words, though, and made sure to wake up sickeningly early in order to arrive early, a few minutes at least, for the doors were due to open. When she arrived, there was already a crowd jostling for positions next to the door. It was all incredibly surreal that why, seeing all the people who were there for nothing more than simple as trivial as food or a roll of toilet paper, become so impatient. Nevertheless, she took her place and waited. By the time the doors had opened the size uh, <clears throat> and the anger of the crowd had swelled afterwards, she could never recall if it was the debilitating tiredness or the force of the crowd that caused her legs to give way, but none of that mattered in the moment as the crowd swallowed her whole. She could not immediately be sure of the sickening crunch she heard next came, next came from her. All she could feel was the rush and the heave of the crowd on top of her. Several agonizing moments passed before the police arrived. Several more went by before they could break up the worst of the crush. To a wise relief, she was able to pull herself back up without much pain. She soldiered on into the shop, even though she did not really expect to find much left. All she could think was the same worrying question that circled around her head. If Chong Gong cannot manage, who can? Contraction. Low Cross is now in full swing, and the things have gone heck. Few people in Guangdong were more aware of the bitter fact than General Nagano Shigeto, uh, Shigeto of the Imperial Japanese Army. A phone call had come through for the chief executive of Nagano. It was Consul General Takashima Masuo, who had been summoned back to Tokyo on an urgent basis. As one might expect during an energy crisis of world historical proportions, Takashima only had a news of woe. This and that support traditionally given by the foreign ministry of the, of, or the greater East Asia ministry have been cut off from the recommendation of this or that good-for-nothing bureaucrat was scrounging around for scraps of his worthless department. What made Nagano really gnash his teeth was an order sent through the Daitasho or the Daihona through Takashima's mouth. The Guangdong Kenpai Tao was to be, have his operational capacity cut drastically, and his operatives would be redeployed re elsewhere in the co-prosperity sphere to meet a graver needs. Rather than Nagano hated it to admit it, Japan simply did not have the money or the will to keep the order in the city of Guangdong as they had once had. Nagano only had one hope, the police, which had acquitted itself decent enough during the Yusuke crisis all those years ago. If they, if now they too proved themselves unworthy, Nagano muttered, I know quite well what I'm going to do and I will do it without regret. If they're not going to hold themselves together by the emperor, I'll do it for them. Everyone state has less Kenpai uh, control. Heed this warning, chief executive, and tread carefully. Which... I don't know about you, but that doesn't really matter to us. Triads are not, not, they're not the worst to have here. Really, between the police and the triads, I think we're doing okay. Pivot and push. Moved to Akeo had seen the reports regarding the new crisis facing a state. For the oil crisis, all of the news and internal signals he had been receiving over the past week were all bad. With oil from the Middle East expected to dry up within the coming weeks, <clears throat> most of Guangdong's vital industries would also be forced to come to a grinding halt. And if that happened, the protests outside would surely turn into riots. Something needed to be done and fast, but for once he felt stumped. He felt he slumped in his chair, and his hand massaging the many new wrinkles that were covering his face. He picked up another piece of the paper with a PTRG stamp at the top. The board detailed several vehicle prototypes that were being adapted for desert and mountainous operations, given the current crisis. Prototypes were expected to be ready within the month? Surely Guangdong could get the rights to several oil resources in exchange for these nations to get advantage in the conflicts with equipment devised by the PTRG. A chief executive put on his jacket and prepared to leave his office. If this report was true, then it looked... It could very well be the solution that Guangdong needed to at least soften some of the effects of the current crisis, but first he needed to verify the report he was given. One wrong move here, and his vision for Guangdong could be stumped out in an instant. Lights in the labs come alive. Cool. A Type 32 attack helicopter. Ooh. I love helicopters. Elite infantry. I love them, elite. Actually, what equipment do you need? Experimental helicopters? Oh, boy. Um, 
Oh, maybe we can't even make them. We just have to buy them. But we did finish the stuff in Indonesia, which is nice. Uh, let's take a look-see. Product development is going to come online very soon. Crack down on corruption. We really want to, but we're pretty good right now. <clears throat> oh, we can send them to all sorts of different places. And product testing. Additional helicopters. In the desert, not mountain, part of a battle plan. In decrease, in exceeding 30 conditions. Engage the superior combat width. Procure data for research would be wise in the PTRG of the Islamic Republic of Iraq where it can test its equipment. Well, Islamic Republic of Iraq. 1947. Bounding. <clears throat> now let's send them over. We can send two divisions, so we'll send both of you. Damn, Mori to Akeo. Still after uh, lighting from a streetcar in central Tokyo, pensively watching the news, crowds, uh, evening crowds mill about in front of Yendo Station. Well, I've been to Tokyo was picking up pace with the war over. The admonishments to skew luxury and merriment had lost quickly, quickly lost trans traction amongst uh, a, pu a public eager to bask in Japan's moment in the sun. Yet Morita still wore his navy uniform. Even as a public celebrated victory, his superiors insisted that they would need to be ready to fight the next war with better bullets and smarter bombs. Nothing had changed in Morita's life for four years, even as the world was moving on. Hello, Morita. Ibuka Morita wheeled uh, towards the familiar force of Ibuka Masaru, dressed smartly in a civilian suit. I haven't seen you since you left the wartime research committee. I've been busy setting up my own company, Ibuka said. People are going to want something new, something fun, now that's not, that the war is over. Funny, I was thinking the exact same thing. What are you working on? You know those magnetic data tapes? I thought there might be a uh, way to play music from them. Film real meets vinyl record. Sounds fun, ready to stop for a second, which was all took to come to this decision. Can I join you if you need money? I can ask my relatives. They run into a miso business back. No need, Ibuka's lines. eyes lit up at Murch's offer as he grabbed Murch's hand. I've got funds for my father in law already, but I need people like you. We're going to assist our Japanese brethren here. Oh, cool. Looking pretty thick. And if there's anything we like, we like them thick. Economic check soon. Ooh, in less than two months, we need 55 and a half billion. I don't know if we'll be able to hit that right now. Oh, boy. Back your bags. Senior Inspector Sagawa of the Hong Kong Police Detachment are prepared innumerable explanations when the call had come to report to the police headquarters, rehearsing some excuses and drawing tenuous conclusions during the train ride to Koshu. His bank account, supported by family payments in Japan, has underreported taxes. He reinvested everything into the stock market. That was still reduced tax, right? His extracurricular activities, part of the job description. Besides, someone had to keep team morale high, and it was easier than women and drinks. I don't care what you have to say, Mr. Sagawa. Commissioner Amori spat, deliber deliberately omitting Sagawa's rank. You'll resign and leave Guangdong as soon as possible. Is that clear? Sagawa's mouth flapped open and shut a few times, searching for an opening. Without any explanation, sir. No matter what the labor laws are, that's just unjust. Unjust? Li Kaxing pulled out a thick manila folder from his brief and scattered its contents on the desk. A waterfall of photographs and copy documents. How is stealing from the government just? How is garnishing your income with protection money just? How is running your own squad as a gang just? Sagawa felt a cold sweat break out on the ba his back as he inspected the contents of the folder. The game was up and had been for some time, it appeared. Consider yourself lucky, Commissioner Omori growled. Like the tycoons want to handle this quietly, make any noise on the way out, and then let go receives a copy of these documents. Are we clear? Even for corruption, these are penalties. There are penalties for breaking the rules. More, less corruption. Very good. Our stance towards corruption evolves to a culture of corruption. Passable. Whoa. Corruption gain goes way down. Way more political power. More impact on real growth. Monthly government support. And cap goes even further down. Nice. Target the ringleaders. If we cut off the head, we can kill a snake. But targeting the ringleaders of several criminal organizations, as well as many increasingly disloyal senior officials, will officially hinder their, well be able to hinder their ability to sabotage institutions. Attack white collar call crime. Corruption comes in many forms, and white-collar crime is one of the largest. Embezzlement is a huge issue, and tackling is of the utmost importance if we ever want to rid ourselves of corruption. I know we need to keep political power, but 5%, is still not bad. Introduce, increases control of uh, triads, Hong Kong, Shokan, twice, Choshu, Shokan. We're very, very close. Oh, I want to try it. I want to try it, though. But we need to keep the political power. Ah, oh, let's do that one. A downward spiral. Cabinet meetings were hardly the highlight of the chief executive's day, and they often descended into a fiddly labyrinth of political intrigue and endless analysis. Murdy could hardly remember the time when he felt so keen to get stuck in these funny details. It all felt like such a chore now. It helped that every single new report only made the situation more bleak. Tax revenues fell, the most of the social programs rose, and business confidence was oxymoronic. Everything was plummeting from bad to worse to abysmal. Still, it did not stop. And this level of demand for essential persists. 
Uh, then we'll have faced potential disastrous shortages in the coming weeks, maybe even days. Uh, the level of panic is completely unsustainable, and enough, Marita demanded, he, though he himself had nothing to interject, interject with. In fact, there was nothing he could add. Besides the stony silence, the situation was utterly helpless, and was more than everyone there knew it. It was as if they could smell the growing weakness of his position. Ricardo was a long way off. The only thing Marita could wish for was not following his suit's spectacular fall from grace. After a while, Matsushita spoke up, trying to coax the chief executive out of his forlorn state. I'll request support from Tokyo as soon as possible. I have some contacts who will at least hear us out. But the words were worthless. Japan was never going to give up valuable resources in times like these. It's all fading away. Our promises. Our companies. The bread and butter of Guangdong and our economy and our many electronics companies have suffered much from the global spike in oil prices and the drastic decrease in consumer spending power. Our, the livelihood of our nation is under threat and we must take action quickly. Sony and Chongkong, two of the most prominent electronics companies in Guangdong, must adapt to these new times with innovative business practices and our new manufacturing techniques. Electronics must be sold, else these two bottom companies will fall into irrelevance like so many have before. Cool. Do the best you can. Do the best, because Guangdong is counting on you, not Japan. Well, maybe Japan is. Actually, Japan is counting on you. Mm, I'm not confident. The Middle Eastern Boondoggle. To command IJ Guangdong formations from Guangdong State Government Dai Taoshao, the uh, Greater East Asia Ministry is pleased to announce that the State Government of Guangdong is a volunteer to send a research division to the Middle, Eastern, to the Middle East uh, to help the Greater East Asia co prosperity sphere in its fight against the horror of Western imperialism. General Ghana was in a depth of rage and despair he never felt before. It's scribbled out a fight against the forces of Western imperialism. Riding over it, get Japan oil, get some for oil, oil for Guangdong too. And effing grab, grub some money selling BS bloody weapons to Arab imbeciles while we're at it. Then he smashed a pen upon his knee, went some pain as he threw it in the garbage and tore the paper to shreds. What the heck was this? They're asking soldiers to put their lives on the line as if they're mere mercenaries. Fighting for little profit as a motivation, putting their lives on the line as, as, as mere sales representatives for the worthless uh, corporations here. Is this the life of a soldier these, these days? As Nagano paced back and forth in anger, he earned for the honorable to him service he had done in China 40 years ago. As if it was it, what does it mean to be a soldier? This isn't the general cried out, as he realized just how important his rage was. Nagano sat down and put his head in his hands, knowing that no matter how strong he despised what Guangdong made him do, there was not a single thing he could do to stop it. Down it all the heck. Ooh. Come on, boy, you gotta show up to work. Once again, alone. And so here we have to balance things out, because this will put pressure on everybody. We're going to basically go on this side here on the tree to go, and this all puts pressure on Li Keqing. Uh, but then we're going to go on this side to put pressure on, okay, all on this side. So we're going to be very stark with what we do. <clears throat> Diversify assets like no other. Mordekio, ever the p patron of verifiable commerce and integrity, has made his preference clear. Uh, Sony and Chukong will, not, uh, Chukong will not compromise on perfecting a commodity's quality, even if it means racketing up price tags to cover our expenditures. Our people, the Zhujin, Chinese, Japanese, they deserve the best we have to offer. Such has been our modus operandi, the foundation upon which our stellar reputation has solidified itself over the last five years of the tenure thus far. And with the crucial aid of our allies in the Legislative Council, we have the financial capability and the incentive to make sure it stays its way to entrench the brilliance of our craft within the Guangdong market and the Guangdong psyche once more. We are an enterprise like no other, and the freshly stoked demands crossing through our nation will serve as its greatest testament, left to dry. Takashima Masuo's brow furrowed. And his pleasure is what he had had to say, and yet more since he knew he had no choice but to say it. Chief Executive, it galls me beyond belief to tell you this, but the center can, uh, simply cannot help the state of Guangdong at this time. Matsushita repressed a scoffed, and why is that, Consul General? The Consul sighed. Uh, oh, that's Ooh, five days left. Uh, the Foreign Affairs Ministry has been sending me missive after missive. The rumors of disloyalty across the entire government, the military, and so on, rumblings out of Nanjing, and now for good measure economic instability from this thrice darn oil crisis have them laying their hands, are t saying their hands are tied. And what will the practical implications of this be, Lee asked, even though he, had, Morita, and Matsushita already knew the answer? Well, sir, the ministry has redirected the budget that was earmarked for Guangdong back to the home islands. For what's worth, Chief Executive, I'm sorry, I really am. But for all the earnestness, earnestness, Takashima's apologies meant nothing to the leaders of Guangdong, nor were they enough to lift the shadow over their minds. As Morita and his cabinet expected to hear this, they merely stood up as one, turned around, and left in a foul mood. Leaving the Consul General's office, Morita turned his back in. She angrily, so much for the Greater East Asia, uh, you dude. But he stopped himself. There's no point in causing more conflict. There really is no point to cause more conflict. No, okay, so without the product cycle. 55 and a half. 
Negative real growth. Oh, crap. Oh, we were so close. We were so close. If we cut this now, could that actually, like, help us grow to over 55 and a half? We're, we're going to have a much bigger deficit, but... Ooh, I don't know. We could try it. In a single month, can you grow by half a billion? <clears throat> to at least get this one. No, it wouldn't even be bothered. It, there's no point to even do that then with that little growth. Hmm. Interesting. Spear combo with, huh? Oh. Corruption's been eliminated. It's going down by 0 0.61 every month. Oh. Well then. Not bad. Interesting. Well, that sucks. Sky Sparrow. So his new chopper and very responsive controls, as Taka Yanagi had found out the hard way. He nearly crashed the thing into the ground the first time out. The older models were big, bulky things that threw, flew in with all the grace of a walrus and took ages to move anywhere. Those were nose lightweight, flexible, and supremely effective. Taka Yanagi was a scout for his unit, bringing his chopper up just ahead of the front lines despite enemy dis dispositions. He realized report of the radio to the command of the ground and zip away before the fighting began. If he was spotted, the chopper was unusually agile to evade enemy SAM-8 systems, and even had a few barrages of rockets for if it became necessary. Thermal imaging and night vision cameras meant Taka Yanagi was able to spot enemies in any weather condition, <clears throat> most importantly, at least with his army procurement office. The chopper used only a fraction of the fuel of the older models thanks to how light it was. War had never been more sleek. And we like being sleek. I don't think we're strong enough to beat these guys by ourselves, are we? The results. On a stormy day in Hong Kong, Yasukawa Yoshiko looked at her mid-year sta statements of all the major corporations in Guangdong, and she was deeply concerned by what she saw. Every company was suffering, and the major companies were suffering right where everyone could see them. <clears throat> most survivors were profits de forecast down was a common refrain across a hundred different reports. Worst of all, the wounds that was Sony was suffering. Yoshiko knew, and she could tell that even more clearly by reading their mid-year statement. Saddled even to end burdens of governance and expanding the market share of Sony Corporation, it was all too clear. They were overextended and needed to find a way to adapt to the sudden economic shock brought by the oil crisis. This was of grave importance for them, Yoshiko knew. Uh, one of the major peculiarities of the state of Guangdong was that politics were tied with economics. And so, if were to fall behind the competition, it wasn't just consumer confidence that was, that was at risk. It was so, so much more. With a gravely concerning thought in mind, Yoshiko put the report down and tried to keep calm. At least, less the chaos engulfing Guangdong and engulfed her own mind in turn. It's no easy task, but I promise it is. Social spending helped her struggling people from the Chinese and the rural parts of her nation to the Zhujian and Japanese expatriates of our cities. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that without these policies, well, the nation would slide back into the poverty that gripped it before more rise of power. The funding handed out to us by the Japanese that was in turn used to fuel the social warfare has evaporated. And with that fact comes a choice. We continue our social spending policy in these trying times or attempt to cut loose uh, ends. No matter what the future may reveal, the present is already crystal clear. It would not be an easy choice. I feel disappointed I can't, like, make things better. Like, we were so close. Half a billion away from reaching our targets. Like, brah. I guess it's not hills or hot. Shock to the system. Also run Gong Dong, in fact, in its capital, in the office of the chief executive, Morita Keo, and Li Kishin were reviewing the same exact report. Yoshiko had been reading. There'd be no mistake about it, Akeo. The situation is grim, Lee said. Morita nodded. As mood matching Lee, Sony, more than any other corporation, faced severe headwinds due to its overriding focus on consumer electronics combined with the burdens introduced by being a Lee company in a corporate-cratic system. As a result of these twin struggles, keeping the company's finances on an even keel would be easier said than done. One question overwhelmed the chief executive's mind, but what are we going to do about it? Fortunately for me, Marita, Lee had determined two potential approaches that could be taken. He needed them for his friend's benefit. Well, we can do two things. We can insist on quality and brand recognition, keeping accepting customers' needs. Marita frowned, but that means accepting costs. Yeah, that's true. So when we get instead double down, after all, we do know what they want and try to produce both quality and quantity on our products. But that looks a huge bust, and of course there's no question of us bringing others in. Lee nodded, even in Matsushita. Applied to us as he purposely is, would jump at the opportunity to jump on us if he thought we were losing our edge. Murder agreed and thought about these options in the end. He said, we need to customer needs. We'll go with his own plan to keep Sony's signature quality. We know what they want. Let's give it to them. 
Diversify Sony Chung Kong's markets. Uh, I want to go this way, not this way, just because this one is going to cost a lot of money. Increase the profitability and interest, but it decreases our seats. And I don't want that. I don't want to decrease our seats at all for now. More money to allocate for innovation. Um, and also potentially decreases like Chinese and Zhujin support, which I don't want as well. All in the name of profitability. So and decreases Sony seats by two, which is a lot. Uh, so we're going to go with like no other. So we're going to put more main uh, choose his own plan to maintain Sony state of the art quality, like no other. So we're going to go with that route. Nineteen forty nine uphill battle. After two years, the culmination of Morita and Ibuka's effort, a boxy, bulky box wrapped in a full leather casing and topped with two reels of magnetic tape, sat neatly in its cardboard box. Tokyo Chushin Kogyo, Tokyo Telecommunications, had its first tape recorder size to fit nearly, nearly in the average home, uh, allowing anyone to record and listen to their favorite uh, radio broadcast at any time. <clears throat> and I think Tokyo Shibaru beat us to this market, Ibuka muttered, bitterness creeping into his voice, all because they had a bigger loan from Mitsui Bank than we did. It's infuriating Morita was less restrained in his anchor. Mitsui's supposed to be our main bank, but they had two, had two bets. Now our sales are slipping and we have to, a loan to repay. Two quietly digested their thoughts in the darkened office, situated on the second floor of the combined office factory building setup. They tried not to think about the workers who had left a few hours ago and how many they might have to, have to let go permanently. No use thinking about what could have been, Ibuka said, retrieving a stack of trade journals. All in English, transistors, something better than vacuum tubes, are the future. Murda's eyes widened at the foreign documents. There are provenance evident by the IJN declassification stamps on the covers. Do you think we can make these locally? Give me enough time and I can do that, Ibu Kaseo, the self assured grin. We just need the funds. Mirita rubbed his chin, rubbing through his options. I'll try, get my family if I have to, but we can't do this forever. What a freaking shame. So, accept customers' needs, <coughs> get more increase. Decreases the related, next release product's profitability by 5%, but we get more quality, and more quality, we know what they want, more, or we get more profitability. Uh, let's take a look see here. Um, well, profitability is going to be super important as well. Actually, for this one, capped at 90%, we can still get more of this. And we get, we're almost near the max there, too. Oh, do we have liquid reserves? Not today. Negative 5%. My god. Holy crap. Um, increase quality and quality. It loses 5% profitability. This one will increase profitability by 10%. Always be closing. Also increase, uh, we won't do this because we lose two seats. So we definitely have to do this one. So really, d increase product profitability by 5% while it decreases by 5%. So you have average, so it means nothing basically. And if you do both of these, you lose, oh, you lose these two though. Decrease government, Chinese and Zhujin government support. So you lose support overall, which really sucks. I don't want to lose their support though. But I'm not going to decrease their seats. I don't mind sacrificing it just a little bit. We consolidate sales networks. Um, so profitability actually is going to stay the same. We could decrease it and also further decrease it by 15%. So basically you do this, you get 7.5. Really, you don't get any sort of increase. Uh, but you get more uh, Japanese expat government support, which is okay. I'd rather really get more increase here. So I'm going to do that one still. Except, new, except customer needs. One of the sur sur surest outcomes of a recession is that the customers tighten their uh, purse strings, which leaves them able to pay less exactly when we are pouring money into the product development. For the sake of Sony Chung Kong's brand and for our little customers, we're going to pass on the cost to them. We will continue to provide our products at previous cost, except the hit to our bottom lines instead. Goodwill, after all, is priceless. Feeding Frenzy. Yes, I need rice, says yesterday's price. Don't give me that BS. You want radios? Well, get in line. Production's down. I've only got enough for three orders. A shipment of Jade and Nanjing? We can arrange that. No worry. No, no, not about customs, though. Stanley Ho frowned, fidgeting with his cufflings as he inspected one of his legitimate operations. A trading company, tying Guangdong and the wider sphere together, in a web of cash and promises. Trading in goods, legal or otherwise, had been his business long before it had fallen in with Marita Akeo and Li Keqing, and it never hurt to keep one finger firmly on the pulse of commerce. <coughs> what he saw, what he felt, coming from instinctually, instinctually familiarity with the commercial cycle, was worrying. Faces were tense, and his staff chasing desperate deals to lock in revenues as orders dried up. 
There was pickup partners on the ballroom floor that passed them with the business the elite had dwindled. There was no time to be dancing, it seemed, as the oil crosses sent Guangdong tumbling into an abyss. Instead, Sally knew his other associates, those dealing in favors and blood. The currency of desperate men were busier than ever. Everyone needed something to fall back on, and where the companies of the state could not provide, their tribes always found a way to help for a price. Those two elements, taken together, not at Stanley, not for any personal reason, he'd profit in any case, but knowing that every soul fleeing from the society to seek souls with the underworld was a soul turning back on the Mauritius promises. Would Guangdong devour its children after all? Well, we'll have to wait and see. We're doing okay here. Run, ruin, collapse, disaster. The oil crust was having its way with Guangdong. The business state's leadership was forced to drop everything and pick up the pieces, just as their predecessors in the last decade had been forced to do when the Yasuna collapsed. Yamauchi Hiroshi, wandered the barren streets of Koshu amidst the hardships of the crisis. Those telltale signs of economic depression and financial troubles were everywhere. Unlit street lamps, lack of people, few people present looking so discontent or disconsolate. The whole nine yards, above all, the sky was dark with clouds and smoke. <coughs> the scene was reminiscent of the days of the Yasuda crisis. It didn't have only been Guangdong for back year back then. What a terrible time to have been to try to do business. The political turmoil, the intense struggle of the populace, the object chaos everywhere. Those still made him shudder almost as much as the prospect of going back to that madness did. Trying to suppress his fear, Yamauchi kept walking slowly and methodically, hoping perhaps against hope that the clouds would clear away soon, one step after another. But to what end? Nice. Honestly, having the tanks over here would probably be better overall. Uh oh. Well, happy February, everybody. God dang it, the economy shrunk. Yeah, that's good. Slow down. It was what? Chun Li was noticing these days as the Darn Oil Crosses wore on. Now everything was slowing down by the rate at which concerns and words were piling up. The records that his Chung Kong factory job were slowing where they used to come in like crap through the goose. And now they came through like a trickling tap of oil, water, about to be turned off. And the darn hat was on the knob to turn it fully off, too. That gnawing fear, the fear that had eaten at him ever since Y came back empty-handed from a toilet paper run some time back. Well, it was no longer gnawing anymore. No, it was stabbing into his skin and staying there like a shark that would not let go of its prey. Of course, the government kept offering assurances. Citizens of Guangdong, you may rest assured that the government of the state of Guangdong will provide all the needs of the population so as to ensure everyone's survival through this crisis, etc. But no sticking that at face value. At Jones factory workers in the uh, factory middle management, who have been on increasingly good terms as the years wore on, uh, decided to gather to ride the crisis out. A few of them whispered about an association of benevolent businessmen that weren't connected to the government. The GFT, I think it was, Chun muttered. Maybe it's time to pay him a visit. Or maybe we should hold and then do that. There you go. Or you should do this. There you go. Use a battle plan. All right, this is battle. Oh, they're dead. Got more rubber, but we need more fuel. Like no other, except customers' needs. Rumbles, Mr. Li Keqing, years ago, when you became the newest of the five tycoons of Guangdong and many other times thereafter, you promised us the moon. You said to us that you would ensure the five tycoons would not neglect the due concerns of the people of Guangdong, that Chong Kong himself would care for us to the best of his ability. Now the Ocross has come around, instead of fighting for interest against the Japanese occupiers, you are going along with their plans to roll back the benefits you allegedly fought so hard to obtain in the first place. What kind of nonsense is this? Do you have no shame? Are your promises meaningless? Were they only meant to secure power for yourself when you forgot the blessings you received and gave up righteousness? I expect an answer to this question. Wong H.C. I know a lot of angry nonsense, said Chung Kong worker to his peers after skimming through the letter. The foreman rolled his eyes, go throw it on the pile of the others. The pile is very high, as it had been every day for the last several weeks. None were very concerning, but all of them were very angry. In any case, the CK Pulse man thought there was no point in paying any attention to such drivel. They so trusted Lee, after all. Hey, the police is here now too. Is here too. Awesome. You have more control than the uh, triads. Now these two are going to be impossible to get down. But uh, that's looking actually very good for us. Corruption has been eliminated. Use equipment as part of the battle plan. Well, I mean, we can do that. Tell them to go have fun. It's not going up at all, but, you know, whatever. <coughs> there goes Black Dad. Nice. 97 when I can now review. Uh, Chief Executive Marita Keo suspected Jabs Consul General Takashima Masuo hadn't slept well for several months. The prominent bags under his eyes and disheveled come over clearly indicated there's no real time for personal care in the Jabs government in the midst of the crisis. Then again, he suspected Takashima would say much about the same himself. 
Chief Executive Takashima said, his voice subdued from exhaustion, you might be aware that Tokyo has been dealing with other issues as of late. Uh, Murakao nodded, if Japan has his hands full of the oil crisis, I hope that we have some sympathy for a predicament. The actor's outside of our control. Indeed, Takashima sighed, sinking to his seat. There's no instance, insistence for Guangdong to meet the pre-crisis economic targets for now. A brief respite. He still wants to go up more, though. Like, bruh. Tokyo plot in Cambodia. And we're going to go with maintain government projects. <coughs> That'd be good. Actually, right now, where are we at? How much support actually do we have? Still can't believe we limited corruption. Oh, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Let's go into this one, too. Even though Guangdong faces its ex second economic crisis in a decade, that's no excuse to fall back into old dangerous habits, despite the calls for fiscal rectitude by our investors. The best way to get the economy back in shape or when times are hard is not by closing the government purse strings. Our creators might benefit from such an approach, but we would be paying our debts on the back of popular penury. The government will continue to spend to keep people at work to pay them for doing so in a time when private spending is depressed. Keeping government infrastructure spending up will be a viable way to put money in people's pockets, and the people will surely appreciate having food on the table in tough times. We would, at minimum, have to spend 25% on the social ad admin bars. Nice. Ma and match reduced demand. <coughs> Unsold inventory is the bane of any company's existence. Emblematic of po costs paid that are simply not recouped. Whatever we have chosen to do on the question of price quality, we must make sure that it matches overall production or to the reduced demand from our customers. We'll ask production lines of our partners to reduce the production of the goods and reduce their shifts, which may help give some respite to our workers while protecting Sony and Chung Kong's bottom line at, at the same time. Loyalty held. Ishida Shintaro, Wong Ho Fai, to his Cantonese friends and family, contemplated the latest set of Sony headphones. Despite the crisis around him, Ho Fai had somehow managed to go through this with a plan to buy a new set of Sony headphones. Yeah, I hadn't got, gotten in expecting very much. He'd heard that the company had been going through more than a share of bad times, being beleaguered by the twin burdens of managing the government and running their own corporation, perhaps. Chuntaro thought they'd say something along the lines of, we know what they want and allow quality to slip some, but mirabil dictu, as the old saying went. That was not the case. Shintaro grasped the new headphones with an appraising eye and saw that the casing was so strong. He plugged it into a radio and found the sound so crisp as it had been with his latest, last ones when they were new. In fact, they were crisper still. Best of all, the price was the same as Shintaro would expect for products of that quality. Clearly, the Sony not allowed the recent chaos to get to them, far from it. They insisted instead on producing the best-in-class products as they always had done. Whatever happens, Shintaro thought to himself, Sony is a dedicated customer to me. Even if Morita and Sony go ahead first and are ruined together. Thus, it played out for many other customers, too. Nice. Ninety fifty drought. The technical demonstration, the familiar tones of NHK radio coming from the disassembled innards of the plastic casing, the size of a bento box, have been short to the, to the point, focusing on the promise of uh, tele Tokyo Telecommunications, a designer of financial details. The response of the much sweet bank loan officers, none of whom were senior ex executives, were equally short, will come back to you when you have a decision. Decision my butt, Murray dispatched, hands thrust in his pockets. Miss Sweet st stiffed us a year ago, and they'll do it again. Heck, we don't even know that some of those bankers are going to run some of our trade secrets over to Tokyo Shibarua, or whatever else they work with. It took everything we have, our relative savings, everything, just to get a prototype together and pay the employees the book aside. We have to get, we have to retool the assembly lines to get this to production, and that takes the money we don't have. You warned me about that when we started this last year. I've gone to the big banks as I did, and then why don't I mind starting small? Door to door, word of mouth, finding investors a hard way, more just ag agitatedly. It's our project, and we can make it work our own way. After we tapped out our bank accounts and tested the limits of our own relatives' patience, Ibuka asked, eyebrows raised, this is in tow for Morita. It's not cheap or easy enough to make and sell door to door day after day. The two stood at an intersection, waiting to step over a dividing line in their own lives. Ibuka had the last word, and the crowds, the crowd stepped forward in the streets. Let's keep trying. So are they gonna capitulate or what? Uh Fuan Taika. Honestly, I think we're pretty much done there. Um, let's recall these guys. Muslim Brotherhood? Sure. External demand recovered. <coughs> the chief executive's efforts to mitigate the impact of the oil crisis had an effect. But yet, the bleeding did not stop. The instability did not improve. And the common people, the Ba Singh, the Shomin, continued to suffer. But this time, unlike during the suit or the heck that had preceded it, now take it lying down. Increases in the price of imported rice and transport fares for key railways caused back to back civil protests over two weeks. It was nothing like the police could not handle, but it still shook the leg code in government as none other. 
It was increasingly obvious that the hardships of Yasuda were returning with a vengeance. Unlike with Yasuda, which was short and sharp pain, rapidly handled by a succession in the chief executive's office, the long drawn out torture brought about by the oil crisis was driving people to the breaking point when they were making it all clear. Big character posters and graffiti and other crude manifestations of dissent, easy to make, hard to eradicate, proliferated throughout the city of Guangdong like a metastasizing cancer. So the chief executive realized that he was having it worse than Suzuki had had. Good. Oh, and happy March, everybody. Hey, we still have no corruption. Economy's failing. People are distrustful now, but whatever. And the economy is still collapsing. Yay. Holy crap. Nice. Good job, guys. Nice. And they immediately get sent to the Muslim Brotherhood. That's def definitely different. Fundamentalism. What is this? Progressivism. Maintain the government projects. Increase profitability. Yes. <coughs> so I don't want to hurt support too much, but I, I'm not going to lose two seats because actually, when we get down here, demand corporate accountability, we could still maybe pass this since as well. That'd be really kind of cool. Um, so always be closing. Eh. Consolidate sales networks. People won't just, won't just won't spend no matter how much funds we throw at them. To ensure the continued profitability of Chung Kong, the adjustments must be made. Retraining and rearrangement of our staff, plus consolidation of low demand sales offices, will allow us to continue trading water, and most importantly, allow us to continually influence the Legislative Council. It makes more sense to be do doing this one, but... Oh well. A barrage of them? Yeah, it's a barrage of them. It's, if, this is, if it isn't a barrage, then it's like a flood or a torrent or something. A coast you stockbroker said to his colleague in one of the few quiet break rooms available in the always noisy stock exchange. The colleague took a sip from his hip flask. That's rather concerning for Sony, I won't lie, in a time like this. Yeah, rumors have it that the investors are panicking. His colleague scoffed. An investor always panics. What, what are they panicking for? To that, the first stockbroker opened a notebook. For what I've been told, that it's Morita spends more time in the chief executive's office than his own corporate headquarters in Hong Kong. Probably no big deal, to be honest, but it's all these idiot spe speculators that want to get rich quick. That are quitting now, and in any case, people are still buying Sony stock anyway, so it's all good. That's great, the colleague said. Then he lowered his voice to a whisper, but there's still one thing that had been suspicious to me this entire time. What's that? Who's buying? How many of them are there? And how much are they each buying? If there's one group of people, well, I'm worried what they're buying a stake that could cause Sony some big trouble if push comes to shove. And the first stockbroker turned to Gelid. Oh, crap. You're on to something. I need to check this right now. Oh, now we have poverty rate change. Holy shnikes. Because we have negative growth. We were doing really well, but as long as we had growth, oh, that's all that mattered. Nothing in the council for now. So, 50 seats, which is decent, though. Welcome to Egypt. Get away this guy show up. Six days, huh? No point fighting until then. Never mind. A routine disrupted. Uh, are you kidding me? We just got our seats taken. F you, man. As the chill water howled around them, funneled through the streets of Koshu, Mur Murai pulled his coat closer around him inside. He watched a steaming breath dissipate in the wind before the sound of the car engine alerted to the arrival of this contact. A big Datsun pulled into view. A monster with gas guzzles that could only have been made in the days of cheap oil. Despite everything that had happened, with the riding and the inflation in the lines of the gas station, this man simply could not abandon the high life as he no longer could afford. His contact was one Sushida Miki. Uh, the legislative council representative originally for Matsushita. However, his loyalties had shifted as of late. Matsushita, staggering under the blow of the oil crisis, no longer had the money to subsidize the blowhard's extravagant lifestyle. Fujitsu, Morai's employers, didn't either, but Morai had been steadily drip feeding Tsushida with small checks over the past few weeks, knowing that he was desperate enough to latch on to any hope of rescue from his creditors. Tsushida stepped out of his car, shivering as a gust guess of wind hit him, and Morai walked over. Words were exchanged, and Morai handed him a paper bag, and then it was over. Much different to the old freewheeling days, where Mariah would be taking men like Tsushida to a five-star restaurant for a five-hour marathon of feasting and negotiation, but it supposed it was more efficient this way. The little crisis forces all, all of us to economize. God dang it, now we've only 48 seats. Bruh. 49 for this one. Uh, Wang and Fui? It was a bright day in one of the Zhujian neighborhoods in Koshu, but nobody felt very bright, considering the situation. Listening to the grim news on the radio for lack of any other choice, the civil Zhujian grumbled over loud against the man they had once held to be the representative among the five companies, Li Kaxing. <coughs> it was supposed to make sure that those dudes of Japanese didn't ignore our concerns. And now what's he doing? He bows and scrapes left and right and center, just as the same as all those idiots came, came, that came before him and ignores the wishes to spare his bottom line. Why the heck do we ever think anything good would come out of having a Zhujian on the Legislative Council? A few voices piped up to question the grumbling. Come on now, you cut him with some slack. The man's outnumbered in Legco. And that chief executive of his is torn three ways between us, the Chinese, and the Zhujin. 
Those two others must have held him hostage or something, forced him to cooperate. Surely he wouldn't. The Ari crowd began to shout and shake fists. From five boys is the insane invective for us. Shut up, traitor. Stop defending that good for nothing. What's he ever done for you, the son of a whore? Above is how it played out throughout Kong Dong. Yeah. Just must be, uh, people won't spend no matter how much funds we throw at them. Surely continue profitability Chung Kong. Just must be made. Training and range arrangement for staff, plus consolidation for low demand sales office will also continue training water. Most importantly, allows to influence the legislative council. Please understand. Um, I'm not going to decrease our seats. I can't. I cannot. An opportunity. Decrease social costs. Increases support. Um, do these decrease seats at all? This one decreases certain these local seats as well. So here you get 1.25 increase for the Chinese and Zhuxian government support but you get two at least 1.75 for every single one this one opportunity decrease social costs you get more you decrease Japanese approval um, decrease the Sony's local seats by one uh, so I won't do this one because I still don't want to decrease seats at all hold the line increases Chinese support by 1.5 percent um, I want to do this one or draw a red line. Oh, an opportunity though. Because right now, we're going to increase our seats by one. So we technically, we could lose a seat here. We shall provide. We can still do this one though. I kind of want to do this one. You know what? We'll do this one. We'll do draw a red line, maybe. Because we're already. We didn't lose any seats yet. Even though we did lose seats earlier down here. We literally cannot avoid it losing any seats. So. I want to do this one. I really do. Fairness, such as a life line, the ultimate virtue of the businessman, doubly so in times of crisis, when his clients call him out to him in desperate want, as a shockwave the oil crosses rubbles on from the home islands, the Japanese business community, are skeptical of our expenditure programs thus far, grows wearier still of perceived unfairness to concede to the Zhujian and Chinese once more. Therefore, as invite Japanese investors virt vitriol, unfortunate a reality as that may be. Public works projects will have to be distributed strictly according to established procedures and expenditures is to remain uh, largely as planned. With whatever over favors for the Zhujian and Chinese restricted to a bare minimum. Fairness is what our compatriots demand, so fairness is what we will deliver, at least on the surface. We could go opportunity as well as hold the line. Increase more Chinese support, increase Japanese support. Or we go draw a red line and, and we shall provide. We're going to still draw a red line though. Prime the pump. Yeah. This is what we got to do for now. Oh, we a little bit more corruption now. 1.5. Active for 30 days. I right, just do that one. As soon as they get home, they leave. Yay! Sudan Defense Force, huh? <coughs> there you go. Saint Julian World 2. Uh, are you kidding me, bro? Yeah. That's what we gotta do. Focus down here first. Then to 51, Angels and Demons. Uh, we've done everything we could over, but the sums don't check out. Scaling production to a viable price point uh, can't be done without more funds. Funds we don't currently have, and estimates which may, which may change. Murray and Ibuka is listening to the final report of the Tokyo Telecommunications Board meeting with the student expressions, telling them what they already knew. They had ordered the board to explore every option they had, and now everyone looked to them. You're all dismissed. Marita, can I have a word? Ibuka dismissed the assembly to all who shuffled out of the room with glum expressions. I got a phone call the other day, Ibuka said, not looking Marita in the aisles from Fuji Tushinki Manufacturing, the Furukawa Zaibatsu's electronics arm, the guy who wrote the transistor radio project. 
I think it was about to add her back, even one as small as a photo car. What would be a game changer? Morita replied. I'm not done. Fujitsu wasn't offering a loan or code development. They want to buy us out. Two sad sons, as Ibuka's words sunk in, with Marita's mouth hanging open until he could string together his thoughts in a coherent fashion. And so what? We go back to working on someone else's payroll again? Morita sputtered, raising his hands in frustration. Leaving the Navy, borrowing money from anyone and everyone we know. All to just take orders from someone else? If you have a better idea, Ibuka fired back. I'm all ears. Falling from grace. Oh boy. Yeah. Draw red line. Around the bump. We could do nothing to spare. But, uh. <coughs> uh the primary lesson of Guangdong's response to the Yusuda crisis was that the scaling back spending in the crisis, even re reassuring our investors, wreaks havoc on the economy and the general populace. Why well, don't ensure that people have money to spend to keep the economy moving? Even it means spending, putting money in our pockets of the people of our own accounts. Our creditors may protest, but would we rather see every young go to revive the economy rather than paying off our debts? Trimming the fat. A final breeze blew through the boardroom as the large mahogany doors were shut, the creaking of the hinges emanating through the air. The elongated wooden table placed squarely in the center of the room was flanked on either side by representatives, clad in clean, well pressed suits that composed veneers disguising their tattered inner composure. Lee Kashing stood before the mall as his wrinkled face became the center of attention as he broke the silence. We have to accept it. Our strategies need a change, the current iteration has not brought us any success during the time of adversity. There is a light seeping between the cracks of the beige curtains, illuminated his shoulders. Distribution wise, it would be prudent for our model to shift towards more reliable markets. He began to illustrate upon a blackboard, manifesting as his slaps using chalk. Which means focusing on the domestic market, that is. Guangdong itself and our networks within the Republic, where a large number of our consumers reside. This consolidation th should theoretically lessen our losses by redirecting our efforts away from less profitable channels of distribution towards a safer, per se, route. A small sequence of questions and discussions follow. The executives immediately raised their inquiries, asking for increased specifics and mild changes. Queries about possible exceptions that could be made, with each of them having answered consecutively. However, the debate had ended before it had even begun. Within the hearts of all the executives, the answer had been clear before Lee had even finished speaking. If Chung Kong were to prosper, it were to continue. This was the best, and perhaps the only way forward. The other binders were closed, folders were sealed, and the doors were pushed open once more. Etchings on a blackboard, steering the ship of the corporation. Please understand. In the dire times of need and distress, we have achieved and attempted much in our efforts to recuperate the ailing economy of Guangdong. We have engaged in reconstruction and consolidation, acted upon an act dedicated to the betterment of Guangdong, its citizens, and its businesses, so that we have emerged from the debris and return to an era of economic prosperity once more. However, we not, must not neglect the entire entity which our endeavor impacts most of the public. Throughout all this uh, efforts and achievements, we have done much to ensure that the workforce and the populace of Guangdong do not suffer. This hour does not free us from the obligation of transparency. Most appeal to the public, our actions have to be explained and their support has to be guaranteed. It is of the utmost importance that the assistant really grasp the intent of our decisions so they may understand that their faith in us has not been misplaced. But we're going to do this one first. The red line is drawn. Please, sir, can you consider my firm for the contract, the sewer repair to Katoku? The small time Chinese businessman's pleading was tugging at Lam Ha Sio's heartstrings, and the bureaucrat too seemed to be sympathetic. But sympathy would not, could not, the bureaucrat would say, change the result of his request. I'm afraid I can't do anything, sir. The words from above are that the auctions be held fair and square. Lam knew full well what that meant, as did the businessman. The large Zhujin and Japanese companies would be able to apply, meaning that the small corporations simply did not stand a chance. Realizing his situation, this businessman put his head in his hands and sat down heavily on a nearby bench, repressing his urge to cry. Lam, on the other hand, silently gritted his teeth in frustration. Yet another Chinese businessman was going down, going to follow the path Lam had to take all those years ago. For all the good Marita had done, some things would never really change in hard times, and many are cut off by it. Now the battle plan's working. Nice. Hey, yeah, this would be a self investment, even though it's kind of sucky right now. That scene's finally gone. Audiovisual technology, nice, more profitability. Still in the corruption right now, which is good. 84% cap to 90. Oh, the ox is back here, huh? Um, we still try to increase police presence. The ox More corruption. Um, hmm. It's a little cheaper. Oh, okay, that reduces too. 
Run the pump. Please understand. Working luncheon. To an outside observer, the executive of the luncheon between Matsushita Masaharu, Ibuka Masaru, and the Komai Kanichiro was maddeningly pedestrian. A polite comment on stock press from Masashita, a grumbling industry observation by Ibuka, a barbed ankle on the news from Komai, the three danced artfully around any substantial uh, subject under the glare of the public eye. That is until they reached a broach to a topic dear to all the most recently, the failings of Chief Executive Morita. Masashita, you're a company man, same as any of us, Komai said, opening his arms that encompass a, a simple trio. You must have thoughts about Morita's programs as a businessman, if not as external secretary. Matsushita's eyes bore into Komai's as he slowly inhaled, the light of his cigarette glowing vividly. It was not the decision I would have made, he finally ventured, tapping neatly nearly half a cigarette length of ash into a waiting tray. Are we surprised, he booked a remark, loudly enough for the surrounding tables to hear. Morita's has always been willing to throw away money for his pet passions, as right now he wants to make Guangdong into a charity case. Well, Morita's taking his eyes off profits, I'm sure he won't complain if we help ourselves to what he won't have. Komai chuckled darkly at Ibuka's words, while Matsushita said nothing to correct their assessment. Never interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake after all. The discussion at the table quickly turned to the other matters as the next course arrived, but everyone mulled over an unspoken sentiment sprouting in the room. How do I speed this along? Oh, the line. So right now, where are we at? I still want to try this. We can do that. 50 seats. We just cannot lose a seat. Uh, I want to provide, but I want to do this one too. Corporate accountability. But if we're doing that one, we might as well do a resurgent. Never bet against Sony and Chung Kong. Our prior choice will determine the effects of the focus. Growth malice from the net oil crisis will recover 0.5%. Our, the real growth malice will recover by 1%. Cal capitalism is, is a harsh, merciless master, and those who cannot adapt to the times will invariably be consumed at the hands of comp competition, but Sony and Jung Kong will not fall. We will harness the shifting tides of our present condition and make it the engine of our future success. Yes. Oh, and there goes Iran going kaboom as well. Not like. Not unusual. Still fighting here? 1952, January, a narrow path. Everyone's had the marching orders. It'll be slow door to door work, but we already know what people want this. Get enough people talking, the rest should take care of itself. Uh, Murray sent the sales representatives of his office with a smile and reassuring clasp on the back. It was more confident than he had privately, but it was more than he had just a few months prior. He had just had a push for marketing, and the sales seemed to work overtime, working with the distribution networks and forecasts again and again, even as they drew up plans for triple shifts on credit purchases of the inputs they need. There will be a week-long marketing push in Tokyo and Osaka's department of stores, a single brilliant burst of publicity that will carry them through the arduous door-to-door -door sales campaign to follow. They had a stock of, of fill, stock to fill a week or two's worth of demand, and then the slower sales drive would be given the factory time to catch up. It wouldn't be a blockbuster, but it would be profitable and still first to market, all without having to turn to this charity of Fujitsu, a charity followed keenly every time he caught another rumor of the whisper campaign from the sales staff. But taking everything just to keep them on board with Morita and his plan, all in the name of Tokyo Telecommunications' success. Of his success, Marita thought, chucking mentally, that it showed his family that he could run a business, that he hadn't thrown away his naval career for nothing, that he could do nothing, that he could do better outside the family miso, miso business. That was his future, it would be his own. He hoped Ibuka believed in him as well. Well, maybe. Two weeks until the crisis, or until the stuff happens. Please understand. Actually, approval, corruption, decreases try control. I don't know the tries happen than anybody else. You know what? What is this one? There you go. Unpopular opinions. Marita Akeo and Lee Kashin had barely taken a step into the chief executive's office before a police commissioner Mori was upon them. Waving a bundle of jaggedly open letters with one end and holding up a rolled poster in another, his bald brow furrowed with worry. Have you read these, Mori asked, shaking the envelope in their faces, all addressed to you, chief secretary. Complaints aren't anything new, commissioner. Lee waved his hand dismissively, battling away the letters with a wry smile as Marita examined them more closely. I know what Ibuka and Komai might say about me behind my back. It's not from them, Kashing, Morita muttered, flipping through the pages he plucked out from Amori's hands, his face paled. It's Chinese, calling you a Han Jian for the recent social program cuts we've discussed. I agree to these policies, okay, oh, Lee winced, but turned back to face Morita and Amori with no visible sign of discomfort. I knew so it wasn't going to be popular going in, and I'm not complaining just because of a few letters. It's not just a few. The mailroom is full of these, Amori, Amori uttered, before unrolling the poster. A demonic caricature of Lee's face with curses scribbled across the page. We can't be too careful, Chief Secretary. 
Please consider retaining a security detail. Amori watches Lee's expression tense briefly as while Morita stared at the ceiling, taking a deep breath to steady himself. Finally, Lee laughed a bit too brightly. Fine, but my family stays in Hong Kong. There you go. That's much better. Mountainous Cup at Operations. Oh, I don't want to decrease our seats at all. We need to hold the line. We really do. We have stated our commitment to extend support to local workers remaining in place, but the fact remains that we don't have room to much, do much more. Both for the future of our own programs, in order to retain investor confidence that there's a life below the five companies, we must husband our resources carefully. And this means, yet, yeah, we cannot, again, save any, everyone. We can try to keep people at work, provide some kind of bare minimum assistance, to ensure people don't starve or become homeless, but our large guests cannot be infinite in size or duration. It really cannot be. Nice. So we support Sony. So between 80% 37 That's actually really good. 80, 38, underperforming. Above average, huh? The American market is very profitable. We need something very profitable, too. We sold to America before. By God, we might have to do it again. So, really, we're almost done with this one. We need like a 100%. And uh, get 20% more. And there you go. And then this one. That one, this one. There. That's what we'll do for now. Mountainous operational attacks. Oh crap. Resurgence. Immense abject power, uh, 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 chaos and instability of the oil crisis. The dynamic duo that held Guangdong together was able to find a small amount of moment of peace to eat lunch together and celebrate an important success. The latest words across from both Lee and Morita's corporate empires have just come in they brought satisfying news. As chicken and kada egg uh, disappeared from both their bento boxes, the two looked at each other at reports and nodded approvingly. Retail turning around Rakwick and Koshu District and a bit more slowly in the other districts as well, huh? Quite so, okay. I noticed here that people have started buying Sony electronics from my stores, and others too, more recently, going back to the way they used to be doing things before the oil crisis. That's wonderful. It all seems that like your banks and whatnot are back in chip shape too, again, too. Those back and forth, the two executives celebrated the success and returned to a new normal. Our choice had proven necessary, and a sacrifice had to be made, and the result of all that was that they could dress easy. The time being, their corporate ships were safe and stable as anything from an accessible shipyard from Sony's electronics factories to Chung Kong retail financial network and it all was good mm, all is not good all is not good man at least we have got advancement the computation and power technology nice an overbearing sentimentality I just don't care how Murray says he's always doing for the good of the economy or his clients, or whatever he book of mutter and disgust as he reached for a second glass of whiskey refilled wordlessly atop the mahogany countertop. He's wasting time and money. Come on, sat completely upright in a stool with perfect poise, even while anyone but he book it to see it. It's not for any of our benefits, surely. It's a patronage politics, pure and simple. Sentimentality. The book of his. Morita has always had an overbearing attachment to things, even when he, sh he should know better. It's not a sin to be attached to your own creation. To be detached is to become indifferent to success, devoid of ambition. That's not how any business should be run, Kamai said, swirling his own glass of wine, but that's business. We talk about a chief executive and their responsibilities to us all. What would pass in a boardroom as an innocuous adventure becomes wants and waste. I knew you understand, he book said vigorously, before setting his crystal glass down with a solid clack. You can't please everybody. I learned that a long time ago, and if Morita hasn't figured it out, then we'll take whatever we please, Kumai said, raising his glass, while our dear chief executive is distracted elsewhere. Hitachi and Fujitsu watch from the shadows. Because right now, we have 95% uh, interest, which is not bad, and then not much else we can do up here, so just have to wait. Tap additional resources? Yes, please. 
The people almost keep spending. Our commitment to the social welfare has aided them in doing so, but the reserves for the welfare net are finally reaching the limits. To keep funds flowing, the pink porcelain pig must be shattered. All the savings, reserves, and sovereign wealth funds, everything we built up over the years, all must be collected now, every single penny. People going down sacrifice these reserves for the future, and for the future, it's now. Whatever the people require in time of hardship, we will provide with the economic resources we set aside during the Silicon years. To question the minimum. The government's decision to retain the current amount of social benefits is that one we view as absolutely necessary for our citizens. The Zuzhen bureaucrat looked directly in the eyes of one of the Japanese executives, sitting opposite to him, fidgeting with a fountain pen as he waited for a response. <clears throat> Seconds passed by in a placid silence. One of the executives gently tapped a cigarette onto an ashtray, the simmering of its embers temporarily breaking the silence. The bureaucrat spoke up once more. These measures we are keeping, they really aren't all that special, nor will they hinder their, the recovery process. We only wish to uphold the promises which we have made, following the priorities of the chief executive. I'm sure we can agree then, no? The executives remain seemingly indifferent, shuffling around in their seats engulfed in some sort of contem contemplation. They could not be serious, the bureaucrats thought. All those years they had spent in the three pearls and they so did doubt the program. It was certain that they would easily support the motion without another consideration, and yet they seemed to be unwilling to accept something so simple. The executives exchanged faint whispers before nodding their heads in united agreement. One of the men turned his head towards the bureaucrat and proceeded to open his mouth to speak. Can we cut anything? Complicating the, the matter. 1952, walk out. Sometimes we would have wondered if there had been any point in trying at all. It had become clear, minutes after stepping into Tokyo's telecommunications boardroom for an emergency meeting, that Morita wasn't in control. He yelled himself hoarse, berating his colleagues for giving up on their one chance of remaining independent, only to be met with the impassive stares or averted eyes. Ibuka had been the only one to engage with him, with cold dismissal. That had cut the deepest. Now, Morita watched the Fu Fujitsu salaryman march into the Tokyo telecommunications office in a steady stream. He knew his time was up. He had been given no work to do after the vote, and it was all impossible to skip the office gossip that he was unreliable. The thought made Morita grit his teeth in a mixture of frustration and shame. He couldn't go back to Nagoya. Not like this, bearing de debts in place of s gifts. He'd go somewhere else, probably nowhere in Japan. If Fujitsu was blast blacklisting him, no one would take him in. But the world was Japan's oyster now, and surely there'd be a place to start again with grit and hard work and a bit of good luck. Wandong, maybe? And he wouldn't leave empty handed. Murda knew exactly what drawer on Ibuka's desk housed the transistor radio blueprints. He'd even nick the prototype uh, <clears throat> itself from Ibuka's desk where it had been left so carelessly. <coughs> on his way out, Murda saw Ibuka leaning against the pillar with a cigarette in hand. When well, their eyes met, Ibuka felt the urge to shout if uh, what, this was what Ibuka wanted, a final insult as he speared away Ibuka's possessions in his briefcase, but what was the point? This is exactly what Ibuka had wanted. Attack choppers? I only use 5%, right? Yes, sir. We got great quality, though. You know what? What do we get more approval? Give me the Japanese console. Kept. The scales have finally been balanced. While we have cut funds from almost every government program under the sun, the economists and professional budget managers have come to an agreement. The government's finances are once again in the black. Well, people will have certainly suffered. We must always remember that the cold, old programs can be renewed, and the cash strip and organizations can easily be replaced later on. Guangdong is stable, and we've kept a word. All that is, matters is to us now. We only hope that people understand the truth we've had and made to save them from the oil crisis. Something from nothing. A mild gust of wind blew in the ajar window, announcing its presence with a palpable whistle. The dull, luminous light emanating from the dangling light bulb bathed the room in hues of unnatural white. Nagata. Nakata glanced towards his vague reflection within the surface of his pitch black cough, his fatigue expression and darkened eyes still making themselves apparent. Before next week. Before next week. How could any person complete the seemingly Sisyphean task in this infest infinitesimal amount of time? He had been scouring through document after document, slaving away in a futile effort of finding funds with within thoroughly dried out coffers. Perhaps Stanley Hode wanted him to magically conjure them with like some, like some sort of omnipotent wizard? Uh, Nakata took his uh, deep breath and continued to send a torrent of coffee down his throat. The bitter taste lingered, but he was too exhausted to dwell upon it. Another beige envelope was opened, and Nakata's eyes once again went back to reviewing fruitless numbers, trying to keep himself awake by periodically sinking his fingers in his skin. Despite the labor's seemingly pointless nature of his assignment, he knew that the matter was more important than it seemed. Guangdong's deep pockets were empty. Waves upon waves of people needed to be repaid, including himself. This proposal had to be submitted sooner or later, unless he decided to swear off eating for a month. 
He wiped away a, a bead of sweat trickling down his cheek. Thankfully, he knew it, that not all was lost. The administration was at least intelligent and perceptive enough to build reserves during times of prosperity and abundance. Hopefully, it would be, impos it would be possible to tap into some kind of those and mix together with whatever he could squeeze out of, the, out of their sectors, should there be hopefully be no issue in this case. However, was it enough? Leave no rock unturned. Because we chose this Guangdong feature fund in the Silicon years, we get the following effects. Increase more miscellaneous income. Increase social costs. And your growth will decrease. Oh, crap. Investor base. It's a stupid idea, K.O. Oh, Li Kishin shook his head as he stared directly at Chief Executive Morita. His balding brow furrowed in distaste. Uh, have I already talked about this one? Um, the two were seated opposite of each other in his office, in the Sony's Hong Kong headquarters. Bathed in the ceiling lights, a harsh white glare to constantly safe for the cloud of darkness outside. I haven't gathered how this would be structured, Kashing, Lee Morita said. Having been momentarily stunned by Lee's unsparing assessment, let me explain. What is there to explain? Lee threw his hands up, his palms framing his face in disbelief. You're going to raise Sony's investor capital to pay for government programs? Mixing private and public money? Not even Suzuki was this. We're trying to keep key social programs funded, paying for the health inspector and teacher salaries, Morita shot back. You want some of those programs more than I did. Lee's mouth snapped closed as he leaned back into his seat, begrudgingly conceded the point before trying a new line of attack. Still an open stock offering when some of our long-term retail investors are starting to cash out. Your investor base is already shifting a kale. What happens when the spectators or speculators get too large to be ignored? And what's the alternative? I'm not ending up like Suzuki did, Morita argued back, even after throwing my own skin in the game. The stakes get even higher, and we like high stakes. The Imperial General. Murita Keo does slide of the Consul General of Takashima's office as an oppressive place, with its slit windows and prevailing smoke, but Takashima himself had never been that way. The Consul General was, as you would expect from a bureaucrat of his kind, a relatively tired man with spectacles and the prevailing air of wishing he was anywhere more prominent. It was irritating at times, friendly at others, generally cooperative, but frightening? No, never. Takashima was, in short, nothing like his military counterpart. General Nagano Shigeto stood less than he leered over his desk, uh, he's like steel in a suit to match the color. Beams of light slashed across his silhouette, illuminating a face which had seen it all. The mouth drawn into a thin line of distaste. The chief executive, for once, squirmed a bit in his seat under the pressure. General Nagano, I take that the consul general is not available? No, Nagano replied, his voice flat. We will discuss the topic of organized crime in Guangdong ourselves. Organized crime? Okay, I could see where this was going already. You have a proposal, I assume. The suggestion that IJ is more than capable of controlling this epidemic, yet do not allow our forces to aid your overworked, let's say, police forces? Why? Sovereignty, General. Really, the answer was so much more than that, like how the stock prices didn't like tend to like martial law, or how Morita Akio didn't relish the idea of wading through blood to get to work. He knew Nagano knew that too, this time I'm holding his posture as the other man leaned in. Shh, this is, can't even speak your mind, you really are all like roaches. How dare he. Actually, what are we doing? It is now, um, July, which is very good. But you, on the other hand, are going to go this way. Because that is where the mountains are at. And unfortunately, we're now out of political power. Kept. Our uh, streets, our borders. Through the economists and financiers of our nation, there's only a few similarities between the Yisuda collapse of the 60s and the oil crisis of our current year. To everyone else, it is very well seemed like the death of Guangdong itself. The fear is palpable, and we cannot succumb to it. Let us show our will and power to the world that Guangdong is strong and stable for the sake of our own people and the Japanese and China's watching from abroad. Expectation management. To, uh, with these, you have every, we have every expectation that Guangdong is positioned with the oil crisis. These words landed among the tycoons with a dull thud as each businessman revealed the briefing materials at their own pace. The sun filtered in through the blinds, lowered so that the hill, evening sun, extending tendrils of light under the sheet of paper, rustling gently in a rare moment of silence in the chief executive's office. Frankly, your efforts to fall short of your own initial expectations, Ibuka's acerbic comment uh, snapped the room back to attention. All these compromises, these trade offs, it makes me wonder if your co coddling ways are as useful as they say. People work harder when someone's looking out for them, Morita resisted the urge to roll his eyes. If you compare Sony and Fujitsu's end reports, you might see that. And yet here you are with brief talking about how choices being made, Ibuka shot back. If there's hard choices yet to come, I don't think. I don't. I don't want you to take me down for your vanity projects. If you're questioning my will or my competence, you could just say so, Morita replied testily, as then neatly snapping his pen in half. Be that it may, Chief Executive, Komai interjected, a mocking formality in his voice, you face competing expectations as Chief Executive and as President of Sony, to mercy, to our profit. I think it wise to remember the saying, he who chases two rabbits, chases, catches neither. Noted, Marita said coolly without bothering to look under Komai's direction. Komai simply smiled and said nothing else. 
Reinforce the police presence. We're willing to pay for overtime. Call in a favor from Stanley Ho. Oh, this is for all the backroom dealings. So, so that'd probably be good to do as well. I'm not sure which one we want to do. I, I further you don't you don't you don't want to do this one. Buckle down. We're gonna reinforce the police presence though. Our efforts to strengthen and professionalize Guangdong security forces are bearing fruit now, especially when we need them to do their jobs more than ever to prove that the camp are tired unnecessary. As Guangdong buckles under economic hardship and murmurs of social unrest, we'll ensure that the police have everything they need to maintain order and hunt down dissidents and troublemakers, no matter the cost it will entail. Actually, do we have any, like, planes? Can we deploy any planes? We have fighters, that's it. Limited by damage, huh? Well, oh, that was a waste. 0.45. Nice. Incredible quality, huh? Um. The vice titans. It's too late to talk about voting layoffs. Our district just had 200 people made redundant. John surveyed the drawn, exhausted faces of the Guangdong Federation Tradesmen Executive Council and inescapable gloom pushing them all deeper into their seats. They're working ceaselessly to keep the independent Zhujin afloat. But where was the chief executive? The pressure from Matsushita, Fujitsu, and Hitachi was relentless, and neither Sony nor Chung Kong, his own employer, seemed able to stop them. To say they were disappointed would be inaccurate, Chun thought. They all felt foolish to have trusted Marita in the first place. Officer Hayashi, Yoshiko called out in Japanese, waving Lamb over to her table in the crowded bar before switching to Cantonese. Can I get you anything? I hear you're on double shifts. Beer sounds nice, Lamb grunted. Hardly bothering with formality with her. Everyone stretched thin. Nobody wants a repeal a repeat of Yasuda. That's exactly what's happening though, isn't it? Yoshiko handed Lamb his beer. Her fingertips slightly blue from the chill. Jobs people crowded in the alleys, protesters in the streets. It might be worth Lamb nearly drained his glass before turning towards Yoshiko. We're seeing new graffiti. Something about a Chinese committee for change, a group that we've never heard of, and Keep seeing it more and more. People just aren't desperate, Yasukawa. They're angry, and ever since Najin stood up to Long Yun, they think they might have a chance too. Nice, are we done with it? Our streets are borders. We are done with it, almost. We're gonna reinforce this. this might be a this might be a mistake to do. We might want to call on a favor from Stanley Ho. Uh, but we'll see. The brain drain. <coughs> Second wave of Japanese. Oh crap. Guangdong had no problem finding labor to fuel our economy, that is until now. One type of immigration from a northern neighbor, as workers move south to partake in the Silicon Dream, this trend has been reversing in recent years. Slowly at first, the oil crisis badly battered uh, trade-dependent economy has led many in Guangdong to move back to the burgeoning industries of the RGOC. This phenomenon poses a grave risk of Guangdong's economic standing, as once plentiful labor grows increasingly scarce, they're in the very bedrock of our economy. We must find ways to address this brain dream before it's too late. Snapshots. Officer Wong leaned against the sun-bleached walls of his police box, sitting at the edge of the rice field surrounding uh, Shang Shui Hyang. It was a notable, town notable only for the fact that everyone left, willing or not, for the distant megacities and for the Chinese border crossing a few miles away. These days, however, people were coming back, desperate, desperate, or simply seeking greener pastures. They all walked out northwards, up towards the border, towards China, run towards rumors of modernity in a forgotten homeland. He briefly wondered if he should join them. Corporal Asana fought back a groan as Kenpai Tai Lieutenant marched them back towards the docks. Another ship from the Shanghai had dis disgorged a throng of Japanese businessmen and their families into Hong Kong. Asano wearily checked the documents, listening numbly to stories of dwindling opportunities in China proper before marching them to customs. The local customs officers were always amazed at how much was declared, invariably pocketing a small sum. Asano bitterly noted it wouldn't be the last time Guangdong would enrich itself at its new arrival's expense. The comments that more slipped through their fingers. A single voice rang out among the hush warehouse assembly, bathed in red emergency lighting. We welcome our newest comrades, drawn to us by the posters or the soup kitchens. A rip of quiet applause. Thankfully, the Federation tradesmen occupies the police's attention. With peace for now, but eventually the Committee of Chinese Labor must turn to action. For dignity, for revolution, or for China? Also, take over. Sell, 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 sell. Almost all, all of the orders of the Coast Stock uh, Exchange tended in a single direction as the trading day opened. The floor was consumed by a torrent of tickets and chorus of bellow, bellowed instructions, reviving memories of the chaotic hours following the student's collapse. <laughs> Well, the junior traders panic, more experienced brokers instinctively sifted through their noise. Uh, they observed the more prosaic details of the order flow in seconds between the downward ticks of the stock index, sizing, times, uh, time, and counterparties. We soon had been exercised in unmitigated chaos. To, here, there was a simple pat pattern. A block of chunky divestments from the small set of players had triggered a broader route, with additional bulk sales injecting panic at, mis at opportune moments. 
A single organization was scooping up the abandoned positions. The Canton Sachin Fund, a new investment house with no disclosed ownership or beneficiary. And one assumed that the fund was working in collusion with the sellers, unethical but hardly unusual in Guangdong. Then a clear picture of the stochastic banners of the morning emerged. A house would take over as in a way to Sony Corporation with the fund building up the 30% one share. I figured that surely rise the fund bought over other investors. Chief Executive Morita struggled to keep his composure throughout the day, his mouth drawing up while his heart hammered at the breakneck pace. As he threw the papers and spare clothes into a suitcase at night, raising to return to a Sony board meeting in Hong Kong, he unconsciously picked up the receipt for his ring phone before he felt his blood turn cold. Time's up, if you can't run a company, we will. Oh boy. Happy August, everybody. But bro, we're doing quite well right now. We maxed it out, so we can actually just leave. And product testing. You know what? I've never done this once before, so. The research group, group churns. As a military cargo plane touched down in the rain of the base, PTRG scientists, military person to plane in the west, uh, the wet human night. Um, I think I've heard this one before, so if you're in this game, please go ahead. Both groups return, would return back to their daily duties, knowing that they would meet on the same airfield again at one point in the near future. Back to normal Guangdong. Ah, fulfilling all combat missions, we gained two more seats, because I didn't realize that earlier, 0.22 billion, uh, increases China's and Japan's opinion. Uh, inactive, let's go. Uh, three evils are going down. We are already maxed out, so we might as well spend a little bit of influence, right? Right. Uh, we get 4% more real growth, 5% growth. Beautiful. So, actually, Japan doesn't have a very good opinion of us right now. Uh, we get, what was it, 4%? 4% China approval. We can spend 4%. Roughly 4%. More growth. Uh, I definitely want more political power. And product interest. Honestly, we'll do that one. There you go. Improved Sony X experimental helicopter. Beautiful. 33 days left. Nice. 145%. Incredible quality. 5% more quality. So as soon as that's done, we can just go ahead and just market it. Capital call. Lee Kuching and Stanley Hill exchanged a worried glance as they observed Marita's concluding words to Sony's executives as he ran a hand and repeatedly threw his white hair. His voice had been steady, partially raspy, but his actions betrayed his emotions more clearly than his words. Our shareholders are demanding a vote. Our competitors want to see us fail. We will answer them with success. I expect everyone to redouble their efforts. As the beige-led conference room emptied, Lee and Stanley huddled around Marita, who sat wordlessly in their chair. His chair. It's just like Tokyo Telecoms, Marita muttered after the room had emptied. Boardroom coup, hostile takeover, it all ends the same way. You're still in control, he admonished. We can fend off a shareholder vote for a while. But we don't have a majority of the shares by then. Stanley left his statement hanging. His characteristic smile completely absent. Sony needs the cash so to survive. With the share price as it is, Marita noted hollowly, stock issuances won't help us. The banks are tapped out with the oil crisis, and there's a limit to how much old friends we can lend on us. Lee's uh, wide brow furrowed in frustration, and China would rather see us fail. How is begging Japan for help any better? Stanley said incredulously. Only the five companies could even attempt something like this. If we can figure out which one, we can expose this and sanction them in the legislative council. We can't be on the back foot forever. 100%, 100%. We need the money now. We're doing it. More profitability. Increase the related, next release products, uh, profitability by 3%. Can we do it again? We're ready to sell. We're brain drained. Yeah. Second, a Japanese wave. A shock wave from the Middle East reached Asian shores. The Japanese companies across the sphere find themselves reeling from the twin blows of the oil crisis and surging Ch Chinese competition. A stock market is plunged for the second time this decade. Many conglomerates and companies are left looking for a safe harbor and space to rebuild their operations. Guangdong is this harbor. By advertising yourselves as a port amidst a storm, we can attract valuable talent and capital as companies flock to establish themselves in the Pearl River. Our Zhujian backers, however, may many business owners themselves, will be less than pleased should we take this Japanese wave yet again. Protector or Predator? Li Wa tried not to fidget as she and Hei walked, waited for the police officers to wave them through the checkpoint. She stood on her toes, still hair too short to see the head of the line beyond the intermingled overalls and pressed shirts in front of her. We're going to be late, wait, Wa shot her brother disapproving Te Frown. She grew closer to him and hide over the years, even if she, if she hadn't adopted his cynicism. We have exams soon. We'll show up late and they lock us out all day. And there's been four checkpoints today, Hei replied, exasperated. We aren't the only ones late and they're letting most people through. Even so, Hay and Wai uh, instinctively averted their gaze as an officer walked past, exchanging pleasantries in Cantonese and smiling at the others in line. Both of them knew that decent cops existed, more so now than the hellish night when they arrived in Koshu years ago, but neither felt at ease when the police were out in force, teetering between protection and predation. 
thief! A whistle blared from around the corner, from the direction of the wet market. The officer smiled to spear as he dashed towards the raised alarm, with several other men trailing behind. No doubt they were chasing some street urchin. There were four circumstances betrayed by a tattered, greasy shirt and torn pants. Hay and Y exchanged a glance. Hay in a frayed button shirt. Y in a, a second hand uniform blouse, and remember that they too have been so unfortunate not so long ago. Dogs or wolves. Morita summons. Oh crap. Commissioner Morita Omori Khan of the Guangdong Police stood up from his position at the head of the table to welcome the heads of the state police's various departments. They saluted, bowing crisply, and they assumed their own seats as they had ever done since Omori taken control. At first, the position was relaxed, or as relaxed as a police chief during a once in a decade crisis could be, but as their superior spoke, he began to act as if he had dropped a bomb on the table. We need you to revert a major portion of revenue, your resources and to investigate the stock market and the Japanese elite. At that, many of them were incredulous. One said, My apologies, Commissioner, but what on earth do you mean? This isn't our job. Another joined in, and my colleague is right. Our job is fighting the triads, the Yakuza, unsavory elements, not starting at a bloody stock trading and meeting mark minutes. Amori sighed, whether it's not you, as you say, gentlemen, this is a non negotiable. Chief Executive's orders, still in nods, as is, is, as is in this case, I require you all to dedicate the absolute maximum resources possible. To moderately stay within reason. Are we really listening to Japanese stockbrokers and organized crime on the streets? That's probably the worst one to do. Oh god, what happened now? We have the political power for it, so. We get it back for now. That's actually really nice having these guys here, too. We're almost capped out here. But once again, no political power. Um, we got a week left. The matter of drainage. So, sorry, I apologize for the long video again, but so Hey, we have more growth now, finally. The assets are much more manageable. And the is actually getting better now. We're weathering it quite nicely. And we're done with our uh, naval doctrine, even though we have no ships. The matter of drainage. Does all due respect, Chief Executive, but I really do sympathize with the people trying to run. Oh, look at that. Goodbye. Marita and Lee nodded. He was expecting that response as Lee had. Uh, it made sense, given that Marita had just complained of this interlocular Chinese uh, Consul General Guangdong, Song Ji Guang, about the issue of Chinese workers heading into the Republic, causing a labor and brain drain just as Guangdong needed them the most. Mao Zedong tried to counter counterargument. Ambassador, sure, this is an issue of immigration law, visas issued, mutual obligation between Guangdong and the Republic of China, but Song shook his head. I'm afraid such concerns can dilute my sentiments, Mr. Mao I mean, with every, even with everything you people have managed to pull off, people in Guangdong have to put up with a lot of horrible things. Their workload is bad, their safety is often ignored. The moment they look at their managers, funny, do they get beaten up? The whole mess is with Hitachi. Really, the question is more of how could it, uh, I sympathize? The Consul General continues speaking. If Guangdong wants Chinese cooperation in this matter, perhaps they ought to do the same, some house cleaning first. Deal with the worst abuses, the ones that helped set off this crisis. Otherwise, even if we do tighten the border, they'll just keep coming. Alternatively, if Guangdong were to open its borders, at this, Muscle Shi's jaw visibly clenched, we might be able to walk, talk about visa restrictions and controlling the flow, even if that flow remains in a direction. Meridian nodded. Thank you, Consul General. I'll think on the matter. We're going to try this one. Demand corporate accountability. It is self-evident that closing the border to one of our largest trade partners is out of the question. But we must make some kind of gesture that will make clear to the people of Guangdong that they have more to gain from staying here rather than running for any exit door they that find. Look at that. Only a grand and decisive gesture will suffice to make this point. Fortunately, we figured out the one to make. What we'll a man the labor abuses that have plagued Guangdong to be immediately and publicly addressed in the Legislative Council. Though this runs a very great risk of costing us a leg coast support, it will make a point for us that Guangdong is indeed a better place to live. <coughs> the CF 2500 portable stereo. Reel. Home stereo systems have become complex, allowing their owners to listen to the tapes and cassettes of their choice with clear, high quality sound. And the comfort of their homes, of course. But only in their homes, which is the only the available portable music players remain in radios, where it were the mercy of whatever was on the airways. All that changed with the release of Sony's latest invention or innovation. The CF 2500 portable stereo. The packs four speakers producing genuine stereo quality sound and cassette tape put into input into a package uh, small enough to easily be carried by hand. Now you can take your music anywhere. Now those darn kids would just turn them down. 100%. Pro product profitability reaching 148%. We can increase our seats by one in Hong Kong, two for Sony seats. And we get a whole crap ton of growth in money. Japan likes it last, but whatever. Now we're playing here. We still have a deficit, which sucks. But that ain't bad. Do we have any corruption still? No corruption. 
Making progress. Once again, Morito Kale was meeting with the executive of Sony's American branch, except this time the two men sat face to face. The executive flown all the way from San Francisco to personally inform Morita on the Sony's progress in American markets, a matter of personal interest to Morita since he'd heard about the hostile reaction to Sony's arrival. Things have been actually improved significantly since our last meeting, the executive told Morita. But the national's demonstrations have decreased in frequency and severity. While our electronic sales have continued to rise, if I were to guess, consumers are waking up to the quality of our products. They're buying our TVs, listening to music on the radios, surely, but slowly, they're making us part of their daily lives with less and less reason to join anti Sony rallies. For the average American, convenience trumps anger. That's good to hear that they come to their senses, Marita said. Hopefully, it'll be easier expanding to other parts of America. As the executive left, Marita felt a swell of pride. <clears throat> and his company and his products. If this was the power of Sony's quality, then it wouldn't belong to all of America watch TV on Marita's, Marita's TVs. Supremacy of quality is something to behold. The demand. The streets of Koshu were in chaos, and they said that the city of control was hardly better off. The Legislative Council, according to the government propaganda, uh, uh, the abode of sober, rational decision making Guangdong was in a state of madness too. The reason for the bedlam and Legco was standing behind the podium making a controversial declaration. Chief Executive Marita had made his decision and he knew for a fact that most would hate him. Therefore, it is a conclusion of the government of Guangdong and that of myself that we have no choice but to declare that the egregious labor abuses throughout the state will be investigated by the Legislative Council. Say that most of the delegates were unsympathetic would have been an understatement of epical epochal proportions. Many of them were, in fact, on the edge of a heart attack brought about by the sheer rage. Many faces, even some from Sony and Chung Kong, were uh, in red and abject rage. Up in arms over the prospect of being investigated for a past conduct, these men shouted and slammed their fists on their desks where everyone could see them. Maruta and Lee were very much on their back foot, though they, backed by a large swath of Sony and CK sympathizers, Cantonese and Japanese alike, more than there, have been a decade ago, shouting in their defense, try to argue that the proposal would not be retroactive and that there would be an adjustment period. Most of the assembly remained apologetic, or apoplectic, I mean. If you want a war with the corporations, you do, one Fujitsu delegate uh, shouted, a misapproving cries from Fujitsu and Hitachi men, will give you an effing war. Meanwhile, Guangdong kept spiraling. Intrusion. Morita Akeo and Matsushita Masaharu found themselves massively unimpressed by the people they were meeting. That was not unusual. Sometimes it was just another crony of Hitachi. Sometimes it was one of the various jack booties in Leko. Both Morita and Masushita only really trusted a few of the delegates they enjoyed at any given time, but this case was unique. They were Japanese businessmen, delegates of the recent arrivals from Shanghai and Nanjing. These men were so self-absorbed that they could not notice the chief executive and the eternal secretary sending sidelong glances at each other as they complained about worsening conditions in China and spoke of their hope to set up in Guangdong. Well, the effort would have make my life harder by letting these parasites in, Murita muttered to Matsushita on the way to the next meeting, with the consul general of the uh, GOC, general officer commanding of the IJA garrison. Matsushita nodded his agreement, and Marita had put it quite well. A potential reason, too, to do so emerged during that meeting. Within two minutes of sitting down, Nak Takashima Masuo began to insist that Guangdong had to let them in. Chief Executive, you are making a formal, urgent request for you to take in the Japanese businessmen being expelled by the intransigence of the Nanjing government. We need to preserve our economic investments in the continent, Nagado nodded along. Marita and Matsushita both visibly balked, Takashima sighed, and Nagano successfully continued his contempt before going on the offensive. Chief Executive, you need to remember that this is nothing more or less than a matter of the security of the Empire of Japan and of the Cold Prosperity Sphere. The Sphere absolutely needs us to be involved in as many places as possible. Marita and Matsushita nodded, but showed no real enthusiasm. Secure. The protests that have recently bedeviled the streets of our seas are now contained. Guangdong's various official and unofficial authorities know what they need to do if and when things get out of hand. The twin crises on our borders, caused by the effects of the oil crisis on the Japanese sphere, have at least been addressed and contained for the most part now. We now know what to do, but our plans may be affected by the way in which the Chinese and Japanese react. For now, however, Guangdong at last knows the semblance of peace. All we need to do now is hold the line, watch the situation, and wait for the economic cycle to begin trading upwards again, as it always does. The profit motive. So which is passing the Executive Accountability Ordinance, Legislative Dispositions. It's actually opposed, no point attempting anything. Fujitsu opposed, no point attending, uh, attempting anything. Matsushita, deal with separately at somehow at a different time. Sony, Chung Kong, the vast, uh, vast majority supportive on a matter of critical as this is, which makes the refusal of the remainder all the more surprising. They've gotten their term entity to demand payment in exchange for the support, and the worst part is that retaliation is out of the question. Potential resolution, leveraging the so-called envelope system to ensure a total Sony and CK unity in the matter. Conclusion. We just pull it off regardless. We're good. Increases China's opinion by 10%. Increases Japan's approval by 5. Increases our seats by 6 in total. This is probably the last big one that we need to pass. We have to try. Ever be made of how much it costs. Unless we use, lose that more legitimacy among the sort of people that Matsushita's men can reach, unless, of course, we have confident ability to prevail without them. Nope. 
or by other names. At that point, a uh, Murdy simply tore out the paper and calmly threw it in the recycling bin. There's no need for written reflection on the matter. He could simply rely on his own memories, especially when it had been only some time ago. Uh, staring across the legislative council in his mind's eye, he remembered uh, well the utter fury in his former friend's face. As the ordinance was proposed, even Komai had not been able to contain his anger, though he restrained it to a mere ice cold glare and let Ibuka do the talking, shouting for him. No, there's absolutely no point in reaching out to either faction for the support in the EAO. There was one, but one conclusion. We had to go to the vote, we go then. Aw, oh, yeah. We still bribe seats, but we don't need to. Secure. Met. The motion is passed. The floor of the Legislative Council shook and seemed under the pressure of the motion that exploded out of the Speaker uttered those words. Mass anger was the majority of the motion, followed closely by the dissatisfaction. Swear words flowed back and forth like so many uh, uh, pyroclastic flows. Even many of those who had voted in favor were now expressing confusion or regret or outright questioning their decision. Whereas yet a few Sony and Chong Kong men left behind envelopes or very clear letters of resignation, not sparing a single glance at the dyes where Lee and Marita sat. They left in visible disgust and never returned again. Yet the chief executive and his closest partner left wordlessly. As they entered their office, a telegram from the Chinese consul came in congratulating them for making the right decision. Cold comfort, Marita muttered. Well, we must well do that. How do we get more approval from them? That's maxed out. China loves us. The conclusion. Strings of printed text and spoken words flow from Marita's tormented mind like a particularly turbid stream of consciousness. The voices changed. One moment they were on his own voice or that of Kishin. Another moment it was Matsushita or the commissioner. And in a particularly dark moment, the voice sounded infuriatingly like that of the dude Ibuka. The Canton Sashin Fund appears attached to prominent stockbrokers within Ibuka. He's got to be doing something in all this. However, all indications are that it would be extremely difficult to secure regardless. <clears throat> um, <coughs> or secure a re requisite. There exists no reason for a Matsushita Corporation to be blamed for the current situation. Any claims that the Fujitsu financial assets can be tied to the hostile takeover attempt are problematic considering Ibuka Masaru's known absent foreign backing such a concept is a practically impossibility. Out of the possible foreign culprits, there's no possibility of Nenkai having done any such thing given. Intelligence reports from Tokyo indicate a lack of action within the ministries that might possibly be able to muster the resources to perform such an. At last, Mirita's mind began striking together those tangled threads of thought. The streams of consciousness merged and consolidated until they reached a single result. Master Shoots getting ready to stab us in the back. That's a son of a horror book, I just know it. Some foreign dudes propping up Sashin funds. Which foreign funder would have interest in taking over Guangdong? Dong? We're gonna go with that one. I think that'd probably be for the best. I don't know, we'll see what happens. And Iran is killing itself still, but you know what? That's Iran. That's Iran doing Iranian things. And at last, Wong Hai Fai and his colleagues, uh, investigators, spent weeks just staring at their financial papers, hoping that something would become clear. They worked on and muttered to each other over cups of coffee and plates of street food that went from stack three feet tall to empty within minutes. The work hours became crueler and crueler as time wore on. Beginning with a standard work day, they spent. Uh, where they spent first 16, then 18, then 20 hours and more on their investigation a day. Going home became at first a luxury, then an outdated memory. When, it, when and if sleep was had, it was in beds that Marita arranged for them when he heard of their situation, and at last, and at last, it had come to a satisfactory conclusion. Ownership records, bank accounts, transactions, background checks, and investigators once pointed in the right direction, dug into the web of connections surrounding the Kansan Sashin Fund. A conclusion was reached. If the show companies and fake names that had tried the hostile takeover wanted to purchase stocks, they needed money and they got it. That was nothing much, what was interesting was that they got it through many dummy accounts. The dummy accounts that turned out got it from one source, the Japanese branch of an otherwise unknown financial institution, the public bank of the promotion of social welfare projects which was incorporated in... Manchukuo. Very good. And at last, secure. Also known as writing on the wall. Don't talk to me about that graffiti. Lamb groaned on his desk with Yoshiko sitting opposite of him. No pad in hand. I'd like to think about something else other than the Committee of Chinese Labor. Too bad. It's all anyone can, in the Japanese social clubs can talk about, except you and I can actually understand it all, Yoshiko said. Undeterred by Lamb's fatigue protest, Chinese solidarity and resistance awakened for the dignity and for freedom. I know the slogans, Lamb's frustrations erupted towards the ceiling, sparing Yoshiko. There's more every week in every district, and we can only catch the street punks painting the darn things on the walls. The two cents silently, the air conditioning whirling in the window beside him. A police station had been expanding did, since they first met years ago. With all the resources, the government had poured into the police, just like they had in almost every other part of the life of Guangdong. 
from the suicide hotlines in the city to the new industrial communities in the countryside. People aren't going to wait for more promises from the chief executive of Lamb's side, not after a second economic crisis. Yoshiko looked at her feet and unable to deny Lamb's statement. The chief executive's earned a lot of goodwill from the past last few years. Sure, from you and me and a whole lot of other people, but for the man who just lost his job again, Lam looked up, asked bitterly. They feel betrayed, and after China stood up to Long Yun, they're clinging to the hope that China can save them, even when they barely understand uh, Plutongwa. So be careful, desperate people are dangerous people. Uh oh. <coughs> now what? The GFT's woes. A plenary meeting of the senior membership of the Guangdong Federation of Tradesmen just ended, and Li Chun took a swig from a cheap bottle of beer as he slumped in his chair. By the heavens, how exhausting these meetings were, and what that was on a good day, which was, this hadn't been. No, the recent explosion in GFT membership had required a marathon meeting, the stack of minute paperwork, or ma minute papers were inches, several inches thick. By and large, the most recent addition to the GFT to a man small businessmen and representatives of the so-called workers' concerns, read underground unions, were from Fujitsu and Itachi, and to a far lesser extent from Matsushita. Those three companies, but especially Ibuka and Komai's outfits, were all far less receptive to the chief executive Morita's overtures, and therefore most willing to wield the hiring axe. The effects of this attitude were many and negative, and the GFT was forced to bear that burden. While Theron and Sonia CK aligned members of the Federation were being stretched thin trying to provide whatever support they could, and the amounts they could provide per individual were declining as the rate of membership growth far outstripped the resources. Whereas yet lobbying the government to do something about Hitachi and Fujitsu's conduct just wasn't working. Something had to be done. Surely, Fujitsu and especially Hitachi had been taken in hand, if not outright broken. But we're at a loss, Chun thought. How the F are we going to do with that without getting us all arrested? Staring outside, Chun saw a slogan in, known to be used by the secreti secretive Committee of Chinese Labor painted on a wall. That's another issue. These CCL people, whatever the game is, are getting stronger. Li Chun sighed. Whatever the heck are we supposed to do about all this, then? Downsizing. In another day passed in the Legislative Council, today the same as yesterday, and whatever else expect to be perfectly emulated in the days to come, the factions screamed at each other to no, little to no avail. The chief executive would announce some new measure or another, which, if it was lucky, might form some insignificant, insignificant benefit or another. If not, immediately backfire should get shouted down by the rest of the council, but every day, circling a bit closer to the drain but never quite reaching it. When Kamai once again took the stand, the delegates expected more of the same. Perhaps a new proposal for state investment into organ harvesting, or illegally reclassifying the Chinese as livestock, but at this point, the Sonians, CK, delegates had stopped even attempting to disciple a groan. And Komai was in any way perturbed by this, he, as he walked to the podium, he did not show it. Under delegates, he began, the ongoing crisis and the continued failures of the state to combat the economic downturn have been a continued disappointment to both myself and my colleagues at Hitachi. It's long past time to confront and act upon truths about my fellow delegates may find unpleasant. As such, I must announce that Hitachi will be closing one-third of the Guangdong's base premises and relocating to more economically robust territories. This will cause an uproar in the chamber, or the shouting when the delegate's cut, voice cut through. Are you insane? This country's already going tits up and you want to kick us even further down? Come on, smirked. My first priority is the continued prosperity of Hitachi Limited first and your country second. Our rivals, it seems, have loaded themselves too far too strongly to this land without contingency. A tragedy for you all, I mean, I am certain. But Hitachi's lucky to have friends further afield. Thrown to the dogs. Searching for signs. <coughs> the phones all, it seemed, rang interminably. They were trilling, hardly muted, beyond the walls of the chief executive's office. A small army of functionaries, uniformed police captains, and Sony and Chong Kong financial advisors flowed in and out of the chamber. A seemingly endless stream of consciousness poured into Marita's mind. When the last briefing had concluded, with Matsushita, Stanley Ho, and Commissioner Amor each returning to their own stations, Marita tossed his glasses under the desk, rubbing the bridge of his nose. Hours of calls and briefings, and still not enough investors willing to save Sony from this buyout. Nobody's willing to break ranks with the Sashin Fund when they were paying yesterday's share price for today's cheaper shares, Lee muttered. They need certain confidence, external fighting, enough to convince them that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Maria turned his, turned his haggard face to Lee, who shook his head wearily. I'm leaning on Chun Kong's board, but we're bleeding cash already, and the more we lend you, the worse it'll look to any actual banker or investor who demands a look at the books. Frequent and untransparent borrowings from a related and risky source, Maria groaned, lowering his face into his hands. If it weren't happening to me, I'd be impressed. The lengths that Ibuka will try to set us up to fail. <coughs> Morita, we don't know that it's Ibuka, Lee warned. Trying to steer Morita away from the topic. Right now, we need to hold back to the Sashin Fund before they get close. They get enough shares and momentum to force the shareholder to me. The shadows grew longer, but no solutions came to mind. The Manchurian connection is next. We need way more electricity. Enough of this. The news had gone over well. Not gone over well. 
The assembled workers of the Hitachi owned steel plant had just spent the first minute or so in shock denial. Then anger came, and the remaining stages of grief were not forthcoming. The sirens and loudspeakers from outside the barricaded doors perhaps hoped to signal the path towards bargaining, although only so far threats had been made. Feng watched the hostages blubber as she and six other workers stared up, down upon them, brandishing work tools and looted security batons as weapons. Looking at them, she felt a sense of disgust that bore her nausea. She wondered if this was how they felt looming over them, dominating them, giving out the crumbs that let them continue the fragments of their miserable lives, only to take it away when it suited them. Not pleasant, was it now? No more. The Japanese wouldn't take away their jobs or their dignity this time, not one more shred, not one step back. <coughs> One of Fang's least favorite managers, now a hostage, asked through quivering lips and broken Cantonese, Why are you doing this, sis? This would not do, no choice. Fang delivered a quick, swift, a swift, quick kick into the man's groin. Do you want your teeth to stay in the same shape? Then shut the screw up, she yelled over his pain shrieks. No choice, my butt, thought Fang. No choice but to cross over to come over from Japan. No choice but to break her bodies on the altar of industry in their own careers. No choice but to do as they like with the Chinese women, and with no possibility of any repercussions. You may not have signed the papers, but you chose all this, thought Fang. Time to reap what you sow. Cross the session. Frankly, come on, it's getting ridiculous, said Matsushita. How many hours has it been now? If something happens to those hostages, it won't just affect your bottom line. Our most dedicated people are getting to part, uh, start packing their bags home, and then who will be left with? Not to mention how Tokyo will react, it is imperative that you begin negotiations, come on, and fast. I must concur, said Morita. He was clearly doing his best to maintain an even tone. Even through his look of utter contempt, I have no idea what you expected from your little downsizing project beyond making the Chinese desperate. I understand human dignity means little to Hitachi, but concessions must be made, and now before the spreads. I'll be honest, Eddie Buka. I don't care for the welfare of the imbecilic brutes you call managers, nor for the common criminals in your employ, or formerly in your employ, but I am forced to agree with the others here. You screwed up. Since you have failed to deal with it yourself and promptly, you have no choice but to negotiate before this reaches the let go, before this reaches Tokyo, before anyone gets any funny ideas, understand? Komai spent the last several minutes of the private meeting in a silent scowl that had been growing uh, steadily larger. As the creases in his forehead surrendered pierces into a skull, he spoke. I wouldn't have expected such weakness from you of all people, Ibuka. Going soft in your old age, but enough of this. I was frankly insulted enough. Being dragged into this meeting, this disturbance is a Hitachi internal affair, and it will be dealt with internally by Hitachi. I don't have the time nor inclination to look after your agenda nor for your careers. Good evening, gentlemen. He turned and left. The remaining CEOs looked around in the room for a moment. Well, crap. <coughs> so no more focuses, huh? Fade to breath. Oh. Uh, Captain Haru could do a little bit of stare at the current shows about to unfold. He could see his men growing restless in front of him, and he felt his own trigger finger becoming steadily itchier, too. After all, nobody knew who the hostages were, yet he had his cousin that worked for Hitachi. But orders were orders. They were to hold the perimeter, form the cage for the line. As the uh, uh, police idled around the factory walls, a growing number of Hitachi trucks and men drew closer to the gates. Kidded more as they, they, were, they were fighting with Chirin Partisans and a bunch of rowdy factory workers. Officially, the negotiations were ongoing. The Hitachi men were screaming to their microphones for, uh, that all the hostages were to be released, and they were to surrender immediately. It was invariably result in the shots of, Go to heck, you man, match you dudes, or something else to that effect. As this went on, other Hitachi men lined outside the entrances, submachine guns in hand. One final warning was given, and it was rebuffed as all the others were. It was going to get bloody. What of the hostages were killed? Not by the workers, by uh, Hitachi bullets. The police had already offered the supply of tear gas and less than lethal rounds, but the private security men had just laughed. They are probably in for the slaughter. As the doors fell down, the automatic crowd commenced. Haru made a decision. They couldn't just hold the perimeter if these hostages were made out alive. Men prepare to follow. Maturing connection. Please tell me of good news, Murray growled, tapping his pen insistently on his desk. He was immaculately distressed for once, but the bags under his eyes, the reams worth of papers surrounding him, suggested that he slept just enough to say that he had. We do, Commissioner Mori replied, with Stanley Ho sitting beside him. We've gone through every part of the account on Sashin's fund transactions that we can trace every layer of ownership that they've disclosed and then some. Beyond the layers of transaction ownership structure, Stanley added, our bank accounts and wire transfer records leading to his king. Even if in intermediaries in Tokyo or China involved, the trail stops in Manchuria. So Hitachi, Matsushita breathed, shifting in to see as Morita and Lee exchanged glances. But how can a relative newcomer like them coordinate the market shenanigans we've been seeing? As Nadi Buka calling the shots, any Fujitsu counts are passive, acting on behalf of someone else, Stanley said, before his mouth twisted in distaste. It's Mangyo. The entire room fell silent, discussing uh, Stanley's bombshell, digesting his bombshell. The involvement of Mangyo, the state-run Manchurian conglomerate, was unprecedented, dispensing even within the faction of fiction of Hitachi's nominal independence. Local competition is one thing, but destabilizing markets on behalf of the foreign government. And the Manchurians, at, at that, Lee ventured, I don't think anyone would complain too much seeing the fund get shut down, now when they've been cheating from the get-go. Their rules even in Guangdong, Guangdong, though. So this is how it ends. The floor shop had quickly become a grisly assemblage of machine and viscera. As the shooting had started, there was little further need for hostages. If they're not getting out alive, thought Fang, then she would be darned if Hitachi managed to salvage anything. Neither their men nor the machines would break anyone's bodies or spirit ever again. 
Fang, Fang's hated ex-manager head was stuck inside a lathe, hollowed up like a pumpkin. Another body lay folded in the recess at the end of the conveyor belt, spilling gray matter into the circuitry. It's trying to clean that up, you dudes. Of course, they were not the only bodies on the floor. The Hitachi men had guns, and the workers did not. Some fought, others ran, so others stayed put, staring with their defiance and silent contempt. But the outcomes were all the same. Fang had managed to blindside one of them with a crowbar, downing him, but had quickly been rewarded with a bullet to the side for her trouble. As the pain shot through her, and she fell to the floor. She had a good sense to dive into an adjoining room, and then play dead. Luckily, it would have mattered. She had no idea if it was going to hit anything vital. And even if it hadn't, she expected to get shot again soon. Well, she thought I couldn't call it quite a good life, but at least I had my pride at the end of it. She waited for the end to come. Only it wasn't coming. The attachment men were not moving forward. Instead, they were arguing with some unknown outside force. Fang could not understand the muffled Japanese, and so it risked appear through the door. The police had entered the factory for some reason, and now they, and the Hitachi forces looked ready to punch one another. She moved slowly, painfully, towards the window opposite the door. The perimeter wasn't there anymore. Maybe this wasn't the end. As she prepared to climb through, she thought of all those who had fallen. Her friend Lin, riddled with bullets. Miao and Yan sat against the wall, holding hands above a pool of blood. All gone, but Fang wasn't, not yet. Their deaths will not be in vain. Oh, there goes those guys. They shall not pass. <laughs> Citizens of Hengli Residential Facility. Blood the loudspeaker, you are interfering in a police uh, action. If you continue to deny law enforcement entry into the premises, you'll be all held collectively responsible for harboring a few known fugitive. Behind the row of police shields stood Hitachi security, brandishing the guns menacingly but not firing them. This was met once again with a volley of shots and rocks towards the GPF lines. Some on the windows, others by those behind the line blocking the gate. Arms were linked, faces morphed into the perfect images of hate. Suspect Xiong Fang is connected to the murders of 24 unarmed hostages in the... The loudspeaker was cut out by an enormous cheer. 24 more! 24 more! came the call. How many Chinese had to die for their money? Go back across the sea and take your laptops with you. This is your final warning before. Before what, you Manchu dogs? We beat you 60 years ago and we're happy to beat you again now. A steel trash can fell from a top, of flo a top floor apartment, sending two of the front officers to the ground and breaking the shield line. Then the mob at the gates charged. The Hitachi fire team lifted the guns, but unable to make a clear shot between the ranks of police and protesters. Batons collided against bricks, fists, and bottle broken bottles swung haphazardly, without any care for their personal safety. The GPF attempted to steal itself and break through, but with every passing moment, more and more Chinese ran out of the building to join the me melee. Eventually, bruised and bloody, the police commander rounded to sounded a retreat. You can't take all of us. Oh boy. Dies illa. The outcome was clear from the moment the Legislative Council began to hear the report against Canton Sashin Fun. Marie didn't have to do anything or even open his mouth. Commissioner Orog Mori and Li Kishin, going off Wong Ho Fai's fork, guided the assembled legislators through the attempt to take over the Sony Corporation. Outrage grew as it became clear that the fun was actually a foreign cat's paw. By the time Mori and Lee made clear that the Hitachi not just disrupted ordinary business in Guangdong, but actively relied on foreign subsidiaries or subsidies to tilt the playing field in their favor, rage dominated the Ledco. The ones not shouting above the perfidious dudes in Mook Den glared daggers at Komai, who merely scoffed, retorting, Would you really do anything that might harm foreign investment? Lee retorted, Absolutely I would, nay, I will. I propose a bill to freeze the assets of the Canton Sashin Fund given the evidence of foreign subsidies and anti-competitive actions at that. A loud clamor of approval was heard. Clearly, when this was combined with the Hitachi's apparent role in setting off the riots, the Leko had enough of the Venturian candidate. So of course, voted yes. Matsushita and his delegates joined them with three, within three seconds of the CK yes vote. The Nibuka, to everyone's surprise, stood up and led the Fujitsu delegation to voting in favor. His rationale was, gentlemen, there are rules everywhere, even in capitalism. And this little son of a whore here, he pointed at Komoi, has just broken just about all of them. To that, the whole chamber except for Komoi and his few allies broke out in wild applause. And Murray denied muttering, fair enough, calling all cars. Oh, you must be advised. Disturbances have been reported in your vicinity. Ex exercise extreme caution. Dispatch. Requesting immediate backup along the Taiyuan Avenue. Patrol vehicles are being blocked and chased by st st rocks. Medical. Please hold, officer. Our lines are experiencing heavy load and system malfunctions. Your request may take time to process. Demonstrations have spread Hong Kong, I repeat. Demonstrations have spread Hong Kong. <coughs> That's a negative. We cannot spare any cars at the present. You don't need to handle this with all you... All remaining units in the area to advise to pull out. I repeat, pull out and regroup at the central precinct. All non-priority areas are to be... Request for military support has to be denied. T tensions along the border. Hold what you can. Wait for that situation to escalate. We can't hold much longer. Ah, uh, things are falling apart as we do have a cup of peach tea here to keep us nice and uh, comfy. You mean peach tea? What could be better than this? Maybe a cup of coffee as well. But the Inferno. Oh boy, look at this. Oh crap. In Koshu, the crowds had assembled since before dawn. Their barrage of slogans and chants emanating up from the streets and alleys in front of the government complex. It seemed that the entire city turned out in their anger, a tipping mass of men and women crammed shoulder to shoulder against a thin line of police at the gates. Chief Executive, an aide hurried into the office while knocking. You have to stay away from the windows, it's not safe. Nowhere is safe, Chief Executive Akeo snapped bitterly. The mobs that had risen across Guangdong were well and truly out of control, turning the headache of the Hitachi factory hostage crisis into a raging inferno threatening to swallow Guangdong whole. 
The previous night, Ake Morita Akeo and the rest of the tycoons had listened in horror as the police frantically reported them being pushed back to key facilities and the Japanese districts in the larger cities, or breaking into full retreats in into the countryside. The Zujin businessmen and the legislative council were ducking his calls, saying a little beyond the government's latest promises weren't enough. All the while, the Japanese investors turned their eyes on the chief executive, equally angry at and secretly enjoy his plight, safely barricaded behind the police cordons outside their walled settlements. Sorry, Marita Kale replied to the officer, shaking the cobwebs from his mind while throwing on a well-creased jacket. Call everyone to a meeting. We need a new response. All the while, Guangdong burned. The simmering anger and desperation of the people, once ignited, is nearly impossible to put out. The Guangdong riots have begun. So the Guangdong Guangdongs evolved into the Guangdong riots. How fantastico. As we saw the oil crisis as well. We saw profits. Cool. And let's see. The region of the Guangdongs have updated, where the amount of government control is determined by the amount of control the police has, supported by our ally at the triads. However, the rioters still automatically seize three controls of three rural regions. Japanese frustration is based on the amount of the Japanese approval we have. Due to the national focus due to the Guangdong riots, due to the Guangdong riots, and perceived instability, the Chinese and Japanese consulates cannot hold meetings with us unless the topic is directly affiliated with the riots. R riots break out in Guangdong. <coughs> the oil crisis continues to destabilize global society. Claiming as its latest victim the stability of the corporocratic corpo state of Guangdong in southern China. In the aftermath of massive economic turmoil brought about as a part of the global descent into chaos, the anger that has long built up in the ethnically segregated societies finally exploded in a violent anti Japanese anti corporation protest. Martial law has been declared, though so far it has not prevented a near total breakdown of the order in many cities. The chief executive has released a communique indicating his intent to maintain order. It's not, no, it is not clear how successful, if at all, he will be. Ugh. The Pearl of Lays. Pearls. <clears throat> Hitachi's of debacle during the factory strike crisis exploded into national-wide uh, catastrophe. Guangdong stands united in protest and not a single city street has remained silent since that dreadful day. The boys have chant for reparations and delivered in the promises made by the chief executive. The people screaming in their ears weren't bad enough. The structure of the government themselves are being bent and twisted. Corporations, unwilling to see the profit margins decrease by even the minuscule amounts, are pressuring us to let these pro protests die out naturally without ceding an inch to the people. With the two interest groups, Marita tried so darn hard to placate each other's throats, none could tell whether the executive's dream will die before it leaves even as a crib. If Guangdong burns ashes, so do we. The other focus needs to be taken. If we believe the situation is under control, oh, we lose political power and stability. Walk the talk. <clears throat> We've been saying we'll make it life better for the regular Chinese and Zhuzhen people in Guangdong, but there are always pockets of where our efforts did not reach. Mainly control of the behest of the other corporations, which legally required or not, often took our policies as suggestions rather than requirements. The indignities inflicted by the other corporates, nothing new but festering over time in the face of our promises, have now exploded in a storm of rage, a spark, in light, a spark lighting the tinder laid by the oil crisis. We promised the residents of Guangdong a semblance of justice and dignity under Sony and Chung Kong's leadership, and now Guangdong asks us to walk the talk. But... We have promised change, people ask where it is, and we must have an answer. Decreases the GFT radicalism and the CCL radicalism. Let's take a look-see. Oh boy. The riots? The riots are widespread. Uh, the two decades of oppression, boiling ethnic tensions, society built on exploitation of the weak, these are things that the rioters have been facing the state of Guangdong and what they are demanding to end. And their attempt to destroy the pan-Asian corporate experiment. The Chinese have organized under the Committee of Chinese Labor, the CCL, while the Zhuzhen stand under the Guangdong Federation of Tradesmen. The severity of their actions depend on both the strength and radicalism. <clears throat> Where are these two spot out of control? Who knows what will happen to the state? <laughs> As the chief executive is to save Guangdong, you must subjugate these two groups, either by force or by negotiation, to do either. The same must take sufficient measures to curb the group's strength and radicalism. Your time is a limited resource, as the Gledco grows ever more desperate and irrational, and the Japanese grow ever more frustrated, as long as the streets of Guangdong are ablaze. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, as we'll see what we can do with the Guangdong riots and the streets of rage. Holy crap. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.